Welcome to the full 80 minutes on Show Me The Money Rugby League TV. As you can see, a bit of international flavour in this week's show. We are looking mightily resplendent in our brand new England Oxen Rugby League World Cup shirts. We've got the official shirts, what the players are going to wear at St James's Park against Samoa, against Greece... And against all the other teams they're going to feature, Touchwood all the way to the final. Uh, we've got the woolly hats because it's getting a little bit chilly here in North Yorkshire. Uh, we've got the merchandise, Oxen of course, um, Elite Pro Sports. Uh, and before we start, the show's actually sponsored by the good people Shane and Oxen and Elite Pro Sports. So if you're wanting to get your hands on any of this fantastic Merchandise, World Cup merchandise, the England official shirt, as you can see. Well, if, Craig, if Craig's in a medium, I'm in a small boys. <laughs> <laughs> so, Elite Pro Sports, <laughs> an online sports retailer. They're based in Yorkshire, we like stuff from Yorkshire, they specialise in sporting franchises, distribution. Shane and his company over 30 years experience in production retail and the sporting industry. So yeah, please head to www.eliteprosports.co.uk. You can get your England merchandise on there. You can get your Oxen England uh, t-shirts, sweatshirts. If you're a gym fanatic like Jimmy and myself, there's loads <laughs> of gym stuff on there as well. Um, listen, Knock yourselves out. Um, you can per personalise your own gear on there. But yeah, we'll keep mentioning that throughout the show. Uh, EliteProSports.co.uk um, And thank you very much to Shane at Oxen uh, for these. Uh, I'm going to a number of World Cup games. Uh, even Sam the producer. Even Sam the producer's got one on. I know, I know you can't see him, but he's in the background and he, he's got one on. Um, I know I'm going to be covering some games at the World Cup in a media capacity. But as a fan, I'll be going in all this gear and I'll be giving it some. Come on. Um, but yeah, before we get into the serious side of what happened yesterday at the BBC, IMG, RFL, Super League, uh, reimagine, reimag reimagination, uh, restructuring launch, uh, Monday night we were at Headingley Joe. We had a. We did, was, we were, it, mate. It was an eventful night. I don't think I got an award wrong. I didn't know the award winners. Uh, I was just having a guess, and I, I, I got Barrow for Community Club of the Year. I, I, I ticked Paul Carey. I think I did say, where's Craig Lingard? But when I did speak to Craig Lingard, he did say that was done about five weeks ago. So had it been done now, I think Craig Lingard probably would get Coach yeah. of the Year. Um, I think based on performance <coughs> and merits and obviously what he's done. But uh, it was a great evening. Um, I mean, I was a bit under the weather, to be fair. I didn't touch much of the food, but Joe, we were very lucky on the table. About we were eight on. courses. Um, yeah. there, was only, there was only four of us on the table, and there were about eight courses. So, uh, Joe. On about uh, stone Jordan, from that night. Uh, da Damien was literally, oh, I'll have that beef, and then I'll have another beef, and then. Uh, and then afterwards, Joe, we had a bit of a night out in Leeds, didn't we? We did, Mick, we did. We had a big night out. We went out afterwards, uh, had, a, had a good time. I showed Mick uh, what I can do. I think you were impressed by my uh, ability to do about eight shots. So I think, yeah, good one. I certainly was. But yes, can't beat it. We ended up in uh, the Viaduct in Leeds, uh, a lovely club. Uh, <laughs> a, a firm, firm favourite of mine and Damien's. Uh, Joe's, was that your second time you've been second in there? Second time ever going, yeah. yeah. Joe got a bit too excited with the uh, with the lady boys, <laughs> <laughs> but no. Let's move on to some serious. I tell you what, Craig, he does take after you on the dance floor. I was watching him move, and I'm like, well, that's not Tamla Motown. His gears, his gears, make to that job. His gears. <laughs> <laughs> right before we go into the IMG, just quickly. Um, I was at the BBC launch yesterday before the IMG launch, just quickly. So uh, the BBC are going to broadcast every Rugby League World Cup game um, this year. All 61 games from the men's, women's and wheelchair tournaments will be broadcast live. This is unprecedented. This has never happened before. This didn't happen in the Australian World Cup. It didn't happen in 2013, the last England World Cup here. Uh, Mark Chapnam... Uh, Tanya Arnold, JJ Chalmers are going to be the lead presenters. There's going to be insight from John Wilkin, Jamie Peacock. They've got James Graham back on the BBC. So that's a huge catcher. Louis Vassell, Danica Prim, Jonathan Davis, Brian Noble, and Jimmy Jones Buchanan, and more. Um, there's going to be weekly rugby league podcasts on BBC Sounds. Um, in terms of the commentary, sadly, I didn't get a look in. 
But they are bringing over a couple of heavyweights from the NRL, and one of those heavyweights is Mr. Andrew Voss. Wow. So Vossi is coming over. Wow. You're known as the uh, English Andrew Voss. Among I the am, people. I am, but... You're better. What they did whisper in me ear yesterday, Craig, the BBC, they went, Mick, we know you like it. We know you like your nights out, Mick, so we'll let you enjoy, uh, we'll let you enjoy having a few beers in stand and these free hospitality tickets that I've been given. So, uh, so yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> Listen, look, it, it's fantastic. Um, it's all here. And like we say, the Rugby League World Cup, it starts on Saturday, Newcastle, half past two, England versus Samoa. Um, Saturday night, it's Australia, Fiji. And then there's three games on the Sunday. Scotland, Italy, Jamaica, Ireland. That's the game we're going to at Headingley, Jamaica, Ireland. That's close to selling out, which is amazing. Is that Jamaican community. Yeah, is it really? Yeah, yeah. Over 15,000 tickets sold for that. That's so incredible. you've got to be quick for that one. That's Sunday at five. Me and Damien are going to that. Are you going to that, Joe? I don't think so. Are you going no. to that, Craig? I have got a corporate there. Yeah. Have you? I'll be honest. <laughs> I don't think we can. Don't worry, don't worry. <laughs> I'll come and see you at half time for a roll. Or oh, that cheese board. No, I'm only joking. But listen, yeah. John Dutton yesterday was like 350,000 tickets are sold now. So I don't know what that means overall, but the fact that that's got 15 already. Yes. You know, that's superb. 37,000 for St. James's Park. Wow. It might not sell out, but just to give you an idea, the final in Australia in 2017 only got 40,000. So you're pretty much already at mm. what the final got in Australia for that opening game. I think... The attendance records will right, go can I, this can World I just, Cup. Can I just say something here, and you're on, you're on a roll here? You, historically, are known as the boot man, because you like to put the boot in. Only when it's just Let me finish. You're very positive about this World Cup. The only way I can feel you're this positive is that you have actually got free corporate or free tickets, because <laughs> I know you. I know you're backwards. You're too buoyant. You're too... Ju- no. You're no. buzzing. Just look at me and the lads. Have you got any free tickets for the World Cup? I've got some free corporate yeah, tickets. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> I've just paid for two tickets to Jamaica versus Ireland for me and Damien to go. So me and Damien are actually paying to go to watch the game. I have got free corporate tickets for other games. But I'm not being this positive because I am actually going to be working the well, world. I wouldn't put anybody to be that small minded that they'd promote something so big just to get more tickets, would they? No, exactly, Craig. But like I say, I, 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 I'm cynical. So. Listen, I'm a socialist. I've got socialist values. Correct. So there we go. But yeah, that's basically what happened yesterday. It was very good, uh, very well presented. Uh, James Graham. Great news, James Chappers. That's um, couldn't have been any better than Chappers. Yeah, Matt Chapman. Uh, he's going to be lead presenter. Uh, Wilkin, not so much. As we say there, uh, Andrew Voss is coming over. Um, I'll put that to one side for a moment. But yeah, look, I mean, when you look at actually the women's fixtures that are going to be on the BBC, even the wheelchair, like England, Australia, Thursday the 3rd of November, that's going to be on BBC. BBC Two. It's unprecedented. Every game, wheelchair women's and men's is going to be on television. Brilliant. You, you, you're, literally, you're literally going to have 30 plus days of wall to wall rugby league because it's going to be on Saturday afternoon, Saturday evening, Saturday night. Is loads of it red button? No, no, no. BBC, no. BBC, BBC two. One, BBC one, two. two. And there's a few wow. games on BBC Three. That's brilliant. So that's where we are with that. But yes, thank you, BBC. Let's, let's giving us a chance, aren't they? They're giving us a chance there um, to rock and roll for them. So let's move on to what happened yesterday. Um, it was interesting, um, and this is probably where the majority of the show is going to focus on. IMG. We were told remodeling, restructuring. They called it reimagination. The sport of rugby league is not going to look the same or feel the same forever. That's what it was built up. This is a 12-year partnership between IMG, Rugby League and Super League um, and things are not going to happen overnight as we were told yesterday. We are looking towards a start date of the, what we're about to discuss starting in January 2025. That effectively does mean next year is unchanged and it does mean 2024 effectively is unchanged. But as we are going to discuss... 2024 is going to be seen as the dry run, the dummy run, where clubs will know what their grading is. But yeah, let's before we go into all that, let's just talk about the actual announcement. So it was announced yesterday that licensing stroke grading is to return. They don't like using the word licensing IMG. They call it grading because if you're given a license, you're effectively in. Yeah, you're safe, if you've got yeah. a grade in, 
you can lose that grading and you can come out. So let's and, and just to clarify, you can lose that grading within a twelve month period. Within a twelve month yeah, period, there's no correct. protection. There's no protection. Yeah. And and this is all about IMG taking the game by the scruff of the neck and dr driving up standards. That is ultimately what yesterday was about. Yeah. For too long, no clubs were mentioned. Certain clubs at all levels have held the game back. And this is all about driving standards up, which ultimately delivers that growth, that profitability, that commercial revenue, increased attendances and touch wood, why, why IMG have been brought in in the first place to grow the broadcast deal, which ultimately grows the sport of rugby league. So grading, there's three grades. There's an A grade, a B grade and a C grade. A grade, those are the top tier. We're not going to call it Super League because Super League is going to rebrand. It will not be known as Super League in 2025. So all the slides we were shown said top tier, middle tier, bottom tier. So effectively top tier Super League, middle tier championship, bottom tier League One. So hopefully that does make sense. So if you are graded A, you are a top tier club, guaranteed. If you are a B, you are either a middle tier club or top tier club because what IMG said yesterday was there's only six or seven at most A grade clubs currently did they say five I thought there were five well, I, I was told six between six and seven yeah I thought it was five or six but yeah well, point, point stands point, point stands. stands you've got no more than half of the current 12 yeah. who are top tier clubs that should be a huge warning to, to everybody because effectively you're going to have a number of clubs and I think Jimmy, Craig, Joe, without trying to second guess, I think anybody who looks at the current Super League and looks at the 12 clubs can probably work out which are the five or six that are going to be an A mm. and which are going to be a B. Yeah. And the process drops down. So your Bs, that'll include some of your championship, your middle tier clubs, mm. and then your Cs, they're effectively what will be in the bottom tier League One and, and your middle tier. How they get to the grading is going to be done on criteria. Now, they've not d decided what the criteria is going to be, but what I heard yesterday from Matt from IMG was, it is going to be closely, intrinsically linked to the return on investment, what the RFL currently run. So if you look at how clubs receive central funding in 2022 and 2023, it is on facilities, it's on governance, it's on finance, it's on homegrown players, it's on academies, it's on attendances, it's on crowds, it's on data, it's on reach. So you can see what these sort of pillars are going to be in terms of IMG's criteria. One thing that Matt said, and this will please those that look like the on-field performance, so they're not just going to be picking in 2025, they're not just going to be picking clubs from lower divisions and going, here you go, you're elevated, is performance is going to be one of those criteria. So what happens in 23, 24 is going to have a big impact on what happens in 25 because the next two years you're being graded on your performance. So the better you perform on the field, the more boxes you're going to tick in the grading. Likewise, you grow your support base. We were there on Monday, Barrow, Keefley, two fantastic clubs who are growing their support base. You know, Keefley, three and a half thousand for their playoff game. We had three and a half thousand for the Barrow Batley game. I know B Barrow sadly lost that game to Batley, but you know, three and a half thousand people, an all pay crowd, yeah. you know, that's not to be sniffed at. <coughs> that is growth mm. under Steve Neal up there at Cumbria. So that's where we are with that. How the structure looks leading up to 25 is there's no change for next year. So Super League remains at 12, one up, one down, Championship at 14, League One remains the same. 24 is the same, but where 24 is slightly different is the clubs are actually going to be told in 24 what you are. Because after the 23 season, the clubs will know what they're, at the start of 2024, they will know what their, their, their grading is. So effectively, at the end of 2023, going into 2024, that is when I think the proverbial might hit the can, Craig, Jimmy, Joe, because that will be the clearest indicator yet of IMG's thinking, because you might have a situation where, well, I'll tell you, you're going to have a situation where you're going to have potentially six or seven 
grade A clubs and then you're going to have a cluster of about 10 yeah. grade B clubs and then it's how they do it fairly because one thing IMG said yesterday and Karen Morehouse was on the panel she said it's got to be transparent I know Karen's leaving I'm led to believe she's off to the FA so Karen's leaving the RFL at the end of the year but whoever takes over from Karen it is going to be transparent all this will be in the public domain for the clubs for the media for the supporters so nothing is going to be hidden behind closed doors the grading and how the clubs have been graded and how many points they've got cause it, it's going to be based, based on a, an average point score that, that, can I just just drop one in there the RFL is saying that now that all but obviously when we've had license before it wasn't so transparent correct Craig yes so they're saying as they're leaving yeah yes this yeah. is going to be great by the way we've spent 10 years not being transparent with everything that we've done yes right I'm yeah trying to get me around. yeah because as Jimmy will no doubt realise and yourself Craig at the end of 23 you are going to have clubs a cluster 10 11 12 very difficult to say but you're going to have a, a you're going to have more clubs with grade B licenses uh, or grade B ca- categories than yeah. spots available in that top tier. So it is going to come down to that average point score, and it's going to be close because effectively you're talking about ten teams going into five places, correct? And maybe at the most six. Yes, yeah, between and that, six and five, yeah. And that's when it's going to be. And really interesting because you can imagine now already it's going to be like well they, they got 24 points they got 24 and a half points and mm. that could be the difference between Radford and Wakey or York and Salford you know it's going to be agree. that is going to be yeah it's going to be unbelievable I agree I mean look it was a, a very long presentation yesterday two and a half hours a lot was talked about, I'm trying to think off the top of my head because there was that much information to absorb. Um, it's all, you Can know, you explain, so, oh sorry, uh, can you explain, because I think we had a debate on the messenger, what are they doing with the French club mix? You were there, explain the French, because I, I took it personally as they're, they're, they're being a bit tough with the French clubs now. Jimmy so, took it the other way. Effectively. Yeah. So I took it as quite positive news for the French clubs. I must admit, I'm, I'm, I don't want to sit on the fence on this, but... I think it will be a positive for the UK clubs. So basically, from 2025, overseas clubs will be capped at two. There'll be no more than two clubs allowed in that top tier. Uh, that, that, but the proviso is that that's if it's at 12. If that top tier keeps growing, I think they'll say we can now accommodate three. But they didn't say that. No, they, they didn't. They've left it open. Yeah, but... They've left it open. It, it, that. It, it will be capped. They've not said it will be capped at two full stop. No, no, it was on the slide. It was on. It's, it's capped at two. It, yeah. It's capped at two. Only, at, well, my, my, my read on it is that if that top tier grows, that that will also grow. Because they want the strongest teams in the, 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 the mind, It'll be a percentage the, the, of the league. If the there's 12 the teams, mind. you might say But two. if you're asking me and now... And they also said about the French clubs, didn't they, about them yes, paying for their own yes, way. They, yes. there, there were two or three so, other pointers. That for was. instance... Where the challenge now is to Catalans and Toulouse's, for them to be an overseas club in that top tier, they have to have a minimum number of homegrown players. If they don't have homegrown players, and this goes for other top tier clubs as well, but they've yet to decide how many homegrown players. So already, I'm thinking, let's just leave the Catalan Toulouse thing. What about those clubs that don't have an academy? What about those clubs that don't invest in youth development? You know, how are those clubs going to be? Well, you want to be a B. You wouldn't want to be, be trying to get in Super League if you hadn't done that. If now, you haven't got an academy, yeah. 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 Just one on the French one. One of the things that I've heard and, and, is, and I didn't know this till yesterday, mate, you probably did. By the way, our joke was all flow, so it sounds Sorry, good. guys. Yeah, I've got um, is Toulouse <laughs> this year and the last two years historically pay £42,000 to fly the club yes. in to Toulouse. Catalans don't. Yeah. Yes. So now Catalans have got to. Yes, yes, that's correct. So Catalans times that is going to lose three or four hundred thousand extra they're going to need. Yeah. So is it good news straight away? That's be shocking for Catalans because mm. they're going to have to find four hundred grand worth of private jet money to fly people in and yeah, out that's what, yeah. for their waking. So I'll tell you now that will affect their cap because you can't yeah. just pull four hundred grand. I think. I think if you look at the response of the French teams on the social media, they're overall they're happy because they were worried. That could have get to one. It could have. It could have been the end for them. Yes. So, so yes, of course, it, it, it for Catalans it might be a bit tougher than it is currently, but overall, I think they can now adapt to that, and at least they know that the the IMG 
uh, trust and believe that they are good for the league and good for the competition. Um, although it might be, you know, in slightly different from what Catalan. Why are you saying that forty-two works? So, uh, <laughs> yeah, but so I think they've took it as they're not. I might be wrong that they're not that good for the competition. Do you, do you know what? It do you know what I laughed at that actually, when, I, when I heard that? Do you know what I laughed at? Mick will remember this when we did Toronto all them years ago, and the Toronto guys that we got on live, Brian Noble, and we got somebody on, and they discussed that you know poor old Toronto, whether you liked it or not, expansion, they had to pay for every single flight into Toronto as part of their own money, you know, and I think it worked out over the period, maybe six or I don't know, let's say. Rich two or three years, yeah. uh, whatever cost it. So if it's that to France, what is it to America? Hundred thousand. <laughs> so when they said it was a level playing field, you'd actually laugh your head off and say how ridiculous that is. By the way, here's here's the cap and the first one point two million you're paying yourself uh, based on your flight. <laughs> Imagine saying that to Lee Drynos tomorrow. So uh, we love what you're doing, but you're going to pay for everybody to come this way. We don't pay French clubs to come this way. But what, why does it come off a cap? Well, it comes off where much do you get money from? Where, where does a club like that generate money? But it doesn't have to come off their salary cap. For no, spending. We don't generate the money, so it comes yeah. out the team. But, it doesn't, money. but if, they, if they were able to, they can still spend the full cap on players. Yeah, yeah. but the chances are, as I could have been told yesterday, I had one of the big things, talking points, was who spends the cap, and it come out that there wasn't all spending yeah, so, the cap. So, on, so, yeah, so just before we go on to that cap, what, it was, what Matt from IMG said was, if Toulouse and Catalans add value to the top tier and they get their own TV deal, that TV deal yeah. will pay for the travelling costs. So, again, everything IMG said yesterday, um, you know, and I know one club owner said it's almost like, you know, we're a fluffy cat and it's on rogue and they're tickling his belly and they're making us purr with what they're trying to do. But you can see what they're trying to do. IMG are trying to raise the standards at all levels, at all aspects. Yeah. Of the sport, so what they're saying is, until this TVD materialises for Catalans and Toulouse, if they are in the top tier in 25, they're going to have to pay their own way. Do you know one of the good things about that is a CEO said to me a couple of years ago when I said, "Oh, why don't they just get their own TV deal?" You know, he went, "Well, we want a slice of that as well." And I went, "Oh my God, you're absolutely putting bricks up and blocks up to it." In other words, I'm open. IMG haven't got that clause in. If they do get money, it's for them. We're not going to take a piece of their TV deal, surely. Which is what a CEO said to me they would do. He said, oh no, we'd take a piece of that. Yeah, I'm not I sure. I said, well, why would you go out? They can't have it both ways. If, if they're not getting exactly. a cut of the Sky one, then they exactly. can't have But the last thing on that, those costs, do any of you think there's anything wrong if you're talking about 42 grand to fly to Robert? I don't see why... If, you, if you're taking Leeds Rhinos over to Catalans or France to lose either of them, it's for, let's say it's three hundred pound a head return, and there's twenty five people need to travel. I don't think there's anything wrong with those for for, for Catalans paying them to get on a jet two flight. I don't think they have to charter their own flight at forty grand. Well, I'll tell you now they do. But, but I don't think. And secondly, to, I don't I, see why we should. I, have I to. even think some clubs get it paid for the flight and then sell corporate on the back of. Well, Leeds had to be free. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't, so what they do is they say, "Oh yeah, you pay for that." We're going to charge four hundred pound for our corporate to come across and come with us and make money out of that. You know, that's that's a typical. I'm not I saying. think if it's six or seven grand to pay for the the ticket, that's fine. But you shouldn't have to charter a flight. But I don't know if they do. They do. Yeah, they do. They don't pretend to. Well, I don't know if they should be allowed to just maybe IMG say, well, as long as you're covering the cost, if they want to, if they want to chill in that queue at Bradford at least, yeah, yeah. Say, <laughs> get on, get on, stag to win two hundred. <laughs> here we go. I've been professional before a game. Hey, I'm so going to be it. So, yeah. so obviously that was discussed about Catalans and um, Toulouse. Obviously, they've done the market research. IMG strategic expansion, London. That was a slide in itself they desperately need a top tier team in London because that has so much potential for domestic and international growth 20 so, years they've been saying that Michael I know Craig it's how you they get are, it's, where, it's where all the money is in the UK I look at London now no, it's to that. they've been trying 20 years to do I look no I'm not I look I'm at not London saying now. No, I'm saying that's we have to, don't I think we have to as a sport. And they've not only had London franchise, they've had a guy putting twelve point six million of it mm. eight years, he still can't make it work. I agree. Yeah. I look at London now and <laughs> are London a B 
category. They've got the academy, they've got the stadium, they don't have the crowds, they've got the financing, David, even though he's pulled back. You'd probably have them on borderline, you probably would give London a B, but would there be a strong B to replace a Wakefield, a Salford, a Hull KR, a Castleford in, in the top tier? I, I, I probably wouldn't. I probably would say no. It'll all depend on one thing, Mick. So if you then give them a B, and David thinks he can get that B in Super League, will David come back on the white horse and stick another million in? Probably. Yeah, they'd have to go full probably. time. I think so, yeah. Let's do it. Because right. like David would probably think, I can't get promoted here with Lee Feb to lose. I can't do it. Yeah. And if I do do it, it's going to cost me 1.23 million to do it. This way, as long as he ticks in for a top four, if that's what the criteria is going to be, top four as the competition, they could get top four with a budget of 800 grand and David can then say, we can tick the rest, it's easy. We can tick the youth, we can tick the crowd, tick the stadium, tick the expansion area. We haven't got no other t- teams near us, tick, 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 tick. The one thing we haven't done historically over the last six years is put the money in to get the squad. Mm-hmm. If I were David now, I'd be stacking up and building a squad. And somebody said this to me yesterday, Mick, and, that, and we do no recruiting, that's what we should know. Yeah. You can't just put a squad together for next year, next year. Yeah. Start now. We're yeah. saying it because we want to earn some money. No, no. We're saying <laughs> it because we want to. But you don't just start it then, Mick. This is what somebody said to me yesterday. I don't want to quote the guy. And he said, oh, we'll start next year. I said, you're an idiot. You start Can now. I make it worse? You look some, at York. You look someone at York said to me they'll start in 2025. It doesn't make any sense. So you look at York historically now, and, 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 and I hope I can say this. Me and Fordy were talking, and I said, God, you're in a good position here, James. What do you mean? What do you mean? I said, well, look at it now. You've ticked every other box. You've also got a top five squad. Probably top four squad. Historically, for the last three years, top five, six, whatever. You don't lose many players. You just keep adding a little bit more quality on every year. So you'd say, who's the favourites to win that league next year? you put York in the top three favourites. So York, near enough, are, are the favourites in every area to get the Super League, B&B Super League. I'm they, serious. They have been for years. You compete me. I, I'm not. I'm not disagreeing on the field. And <laughs> because, off the field. because the, 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 the York Stadium, the facilities was brought up, and you probably would have York ahead of a Salford, ahead of a Wakefield, ahead would, of a Castle. When Clint bought the club for a reputedly a figure, he, he probably's been the clever one. John Flatman and Matt, wherever it was, then rode off to the sunset with a few quid. If York gets so bleak. This guy's cheap at the price. <laughs> this guy's absolutely nailed it. He's looked. Well, well it's interesting about Clint, because I didn't when I spoke to Clint on Monday evening, I didn't realise he used to work for IMG. Well, I didn't <laughs> say that. So Clint, yeah, he said he used to work for IMG. I'm not I saying this with any, with IMG. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. not for. But yeah. no, no, I'm not I'm not listen, listen, anyway, listen, I'm not I'm not insinuating anything yeah. here, but Clint clearly sees York as ticking the boxes where IMG are gonna look. Mm. So, you know, fair play, fair play to York. So we get to 2024, end of 24, the clubs are giving the gradings. Sorry, just to rewind it very quickly, you said that it is going to be one up, one down next year for yes. the Championship Super League. I don't, is that a fact? Yes. It is. One up, one down, yes. Right. Super League's going to remain at 12. For the year after they don't win it. Championship will be 14 in 24. Right. League One, there's no cast iron guarantee that League One's going to survive because what they said yesterday was some clubs will fall. They'll decide to call it a day because they'll realise that they're not going to make it, basically. They're not, they're not, they've not got the drive, they've not got the ambition, they've not got the catchment area, the facilities to... They'll become, though, Michael, let's say... They'll come strong community clubs, no, no, yeah. no. Let's say there's six of them clubs who, if they got financial backing, would, would be ticking the boxes. So the League One clubs? Yeah, so historically, Cornwall now become dangerous, dangerous proposition to, and Cornwall be, could become a dangerous proposition. Correct, with as investment. In positive yeah, with, 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 with in investment, yes. Cornwall could be good. Yeah. Yes. You go, Doncaster. We'll tick a lot of boxes. Correct. A bit close to Sheffield, as they've always said. They like them to be separated. That's what I got told last night. They're always like that. But they want Yorkshire, South Yorkshire in. So you look at that. Your historic clubs who are... Who are <coughs> Oh, I've got four or five clubs next to each other. All them Swinton watched out. Probably got big problems. That's what it's all about. It'll be them who say, you know what? Even if we invest money here, and what you can tell about business, Mick, is when you've got a business plan and you go to people with money, and you finally have what they've done yesterday, there'll be some, what we will see, and quote me, 
you'll see some very wealthy people come into our sport because there'll be a chance to get to the promised land. Yeah. And that's not been there for a lot of years without spending four or five million. Mm. This time, you can look at a club and go, I won't mind buying corn. I won't mind getting involved here. I won't mind getting involved at this club and this club. I'd love to see a Dublin, you know, or, or another franchise come and give it a go. Or a, But if you look at it sensible, money men would want to be yeah, involved. But Cornwall does have a money man behind yeah, that's it. What yeah, that's what I'm saying. They're, they're dangerous. Really? Other clubs, not, yeah. not the other clubs. The other clubs are poor under look and you go, so without mentioning him, if you mention this club, they're going to go, whatever we do now, we can't go no further. This is it for and, us. And, and that's what, that's, what, uh, that's what they were saying, the RFL yeah. and IMG. In that there'll be sort of a natural realization that the clubs are never going to be a, a, a category B or be given a category B, so they're never ever going to have that opportunity to to reach the top tier, whatever it's going to get rebranded as. So there is question marks over League One, certainly in the twenty four into two thousand and twenty five. Um, but again, you know, the main thing is there will be a top tier and a bottom tier. And again, 2024 is when that realisation is going to come because everybody at the start of 2024 is going to be given their mock... Current grade. Current grade. So they will know what they are working towards. And they'll also be told, look, yeah, it'll be like any grade in your block. In this category, you're an A, you're an A, you're an A, but then this, you're a B, and this, you're yeah. a C. You yeah. know? So if, if C is geographical location, you can't do anything about it. But well, then you might have to strengthen youth. Your you problem with the last franchise is they give these grading based on the clubs they wanted to get in, didn't they, Mick? So they put some, some technicalities they put in last time, like you are not allowed to be 4.6 miles from any of the club. <laughs> so that got rid of the one they wanted. Now, you have got to have an historic. Yes, yeah, so Bradford. Bradford, or Bradford. Yeah. You've got to have historic things in the top four of the club, didn't it? Mm-hmm. Right away, every other club, Bradford had a chance. That were years ago. So I wonder, I'd love to see, and which is what you've used the word at the start of the show, transparency. Mm-hmm. Yes. Oh, that's amazing. If oh, we that. can get that out to everybody, then everyone can see it. I think what happened last time, it, that come out afterwards, and they were like, well, you've just, you've just, you've got the clubs you wanted and designed a plan yeah. on the basis of that. Yeah. Let's hope it in that and that. Because this seems to me like a, a new club would have a chance. Yeah. yeah. You know, you'd be like, hey, okay, these ones, these old flowers are going to die, but these new plants are going to come and have a real chance of, a spruce in the garden because if you were looking at an area of expansion you'd look at somewhere where you'd go right if I get a club there and I start in champ one I could with investment work it up very quickly and tick all the boxes <coughs> which that's the positive thing isn't it yeah. I like the feeling of, of new don't you I know 100%. you're a historian of the game Mick I know you're a historian but if you think about it it's more or less saying unless you lot we've all got houses now and unless you put energy things on your house and all these new things, you can't keep... It's more or less that if you don't go with it and stay as you are, you're going to have no value to the, to the comp. And it's like what But I if said. you're willing to adjust, come with the right. You're going to have a right chance. Yeah. And, and the two big categories, and this is what it'll come down to, and this is where there needs to be transparency within the transparency, because I, we, when we talked about this weeks and weeks ago, I get stuck on geographical location... And attendances because I think they're both crucial. And you probably put I'd probably put stadium as third. So the weighting of the points, if you can get 20 points for geographical location, then that automatically means Newcastle scored 18 and Cornwall scored 20, let's say. Now, if fans is, is a similar one, it Cornwall have done really well this year, they've averaged over a thousand and second bottom thing. If you can get 20 points for geographical location and something like inviting points, and you sat there with, say, 40 points, does that mean you're in? Do you know what I mean? Well, if, if, if they if, weight certain categories really heavily and someone smashes a category, they might not have performed for donkey's years, but it won't matter. You know, or do you have to hit a certain level in every category? No, you, you, this yeah, is where yeah. they're going to have to be really yeah, transparent. You have, to, you have to hit a certain level in, in every, every category. Yeah, yeah. With performance on the field, obviously, being a, a crucial one as well. Well, that's brilliant. And one thing they said is, you're not going to have a club from the bottom tier going straight to the top tier, because yeah. that would mean they've not performed on the field. Overnight. So you couldn't just have somebody putting a million pound in Cornwall, and then they're going straight from the bottom tier to the top tier. What happened? You've yeah. got to have... They'd have, they'd have to have a couple of years yeah. in the second What year. they've done, as Craig said, we'll talk about the fixtures and how the season's going to look in a moment, but what Matt did say was 
that currently this year there's four Super League clubs, he didn't name them, but there's four Super League clubs that are not spending the salary cap. That is bringing down the product, it's bringing down the sport. So what they are going to introduce in 25 is a salary cap floor. If you want to be a top tier team, you have to spend X amount, especially if we're giving you X amount in central funding from a broadcast deal. So the days of clubs, I won't mention them, but there's certainly one that I know... um, a current Super League club that will take the central funding um, and then they will basically spend less than the cap and that excess will be used to pay CEOs, staff and basically keep that club ticking over. Um, Has that club won Super League? No, it hasn't. But this is what IMG are trying to do. I applaud bringing in the salary cap floor because that is going to make sure every club in that top tier I've got a spending. massive argument with that though no it, it, it's fine you can make your point Joe but I'm just saying I agree with what IMG are trying to do if you are a top tier club you should be spending the salary cap you should not be trying to scrimp and save on and players, to on players the alone though because on players alone the whole point of franchising is that if you if you are struggling with your players or your product or in some area as in what happens in the NBA there's such a thing where you can not pay the salary cap, but that normally means the young players are coming yeah, through. Yeah. If you're if you're being made to pay the salary cap every year, you know have the same issue as they're having to. They, they'll literally have to pay an, an, a random Aussie at twenty or thirty two just to just to be in there, just so they don't get in trouble. Which I think that's the flaw. That's my major flaw of the argument. You don't that, secure the young player and give him a bit more and, and no, co- no, because it's a salary. Cap no, because floor. a young player, a, young, a good contract for a young player. At the age of 18, 19, you'd be crying at 40, 50, 60, 70k. And Aussie comes over 180, 160, 170. No, I, I, I disagree. So if you wanted to keep the top 10 young players in this game, you'd give them three. Yeah, but them. not every club has a top 10. That's, there's yeah. not enough play. There's not, they, no, the category age will have. So we, 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 this is what I got told last night. The one thing they're doing as well is they don't want no man. They want us to make this comp. So this is it's the It's all grown. Yeah, there's going to be an all So they want to say to a, let's just put Lewis Murphy in there then. They want to say to Lewis Murphy, hopefully use a bit of the cap. Instead of paying Lewis X amount, pay him four years at that amount and keep him. And if you did, I can only speak but for the, hours. Majority of our players, if they got absolutely but that the current market the doesn't, they'd have to the, the whole market would have to change then. Yeah, they'd have to, well, I think that's what we're saying. Yeah, yeah. yeah. hopefully I, that's what they do. I, I, but, I, but I, I, yeah, give you, me your thoughts on the salary. Fuck, I, I like, I like, I, I, I sorry. like Joe. <laughs> sorry, I'm no, I'm Sorry, Joe. I'm going to back Joe's point up because I think the salary cap floor is a great idea, but it all it's all about how high is that floor. I don't see any reason as it stands currently with a club. If they spend their money wisely, and let's take Salford for an example, I don't know if they've spent the full cap or not, but let's say Salford didn't spend the full cap this year, and they have spent it wisely and performed brilliantly. If they have then used the £200,000, for example, they saved by not spending the full cap, on investing it in their, uh, I don't have an academy, but in investing it in youth, then I'd say that's just well-spent money. But what we don't want to see is if a club's not spending the cap, that money be spent on things that aren't contributing. Well, even to like a thirty-three-year-old English CEO, player. CEO, yeah, but CEO. even like a thirty-three-year-old English player who they just do chuck money at. It's it. a protection of the TV. So the TV is saying, IMG is saying, if we're going to give you hundred million over the next four year, you're putting shite product out. You're playing on a Sky Thursday night off a 1.1 cap. Mm. And we've all watched it. Let's be honest. Yeah. We've all watched it. When you know cap's not being played, you go, yeah. oh my God. I, that product I, I is, is so bad it. that people, Sky are saying, we yeah. don't want that product on, and, and on that, our thing. And, and that's why yeah, it's that, there's, no point in, about there's no point of franchising. The whole point of franchising is that you can, what? like NBA, they, there's such a thing, there's a lot of discussion about it, but tanking they call it tanking where you literally spend two years the club the ceo which obviously transparency ceo goes we are going to tank for two or three years which means we're going to tr- get as many draft picks as we can get them all in get all the best young players p- eventually build mm-hmm. up their pay but this is going to take two or three years and we're going to get and they spend nowhere near as much as like the LA yeah, Lakers. Yeah, you might have enough 10-year deal where they can do that. I think they're saying to us, we're up in a year and a half. But how do you get the balance I'm telling then? you, we're up in a year and a half. We've got to produce some good uh-huh. games. And they're saying less is better. Mm. So they're saying, forget about these loads of fixtures where quality... And it is. It's, I've heard he said this. If he did, I applaud you. I haven't met you yet. And we, you know, we, we, 
But he's a lovely treat. bloke. We got on like I love the fact he did torture him. I love the fact that um, if he has said and had the guts to say, I've been watching some dross on. <laughs> if it's true, he said it. He did. Like, he, but why does that change? Why does that, why does that change the dross? Oh. Just having the salary cap because it doesn't change well, the dross. Then it will just. Value a player higher. No, no. Think of it like how this. does that like improve the product? Your, your, your example of, um, and I totally get what you're saying. Right, we need to spend this 150 grand. Let's go get this Aussie with no legs left. What they should do, and hopefully what they will say, Aussie. By the way, let's be biased. Our English, well, our friend. a 33 year old. Yeah. Well, what they should do then is go. When, when the dross that's been on TV this year is when clubs have been missing seven of their starting players and they've put in their weaker players. What the club should do then is go, and instead of filling our squad with 30 grand players, we should, be, we should be getting a stronger squad. So when we need to call upon the fringe players, their higher quality, 70, well, you're get them 78, at this moment 78, you're 78 keep the top players. juniors and you can put some of these top, instead of losing into it, we're now losing, is it six or seven a year to other games? Yeah. We've got to secure them. Yeah, but is that, is that a no, six or seven is not going to make a whole difference to the, to the whole, what's the whole system? The pay is going to go up. Yeah, I'm, I'm brilliant about that. I'm not arguing about the pay of young... I think it's they deserve to be paid more. That's not my argument. But my argument is them players are still the same standard. So his argument about improving I the standard... I suppose a quick one on the salary cap would be this. Yeah, Let's say... Our Aussies in. That's what, I don't <laughs> know allowing the, they're, they're allowing one ma- the marquee. And I think they're taking the, uh, the amount on the marquee can go to what? That's what I've heard, Mick. I don't know if you did. Yeah, yeah, no, no. So the marquee signing can be more or less anything. Right. Yes, correct. So if that's true... It's, I can see the direction it's, it's saying if you are Warrington and you want to go and get Jonathan Thilston in his prime 27 Mr Moran loosen the belt son let's do it correct and let's me- and whatever you bring is, is brilliant because every time we just guy for that deal the quality's better we've got some- I think at the moment that guy sat there for a year the reckon watching and he's gone no it, it did that's a good game and then he's gone that's, that's awful. What am I watching? He, he, and he's looked at the figures and he's going, yeah. they're putting absolute... And then he's probably made some phone calls and going, what we played off cap there, they've gone 600 grand. And he's gone, we can't afford to do that. NBA probably can. They've probably got enough stars to carry a game watching the good ones. I don't think we have... We how, can't watch. We don't have enough squad depth to not make that well, happen. Well, that's what they're going to try and do. They're going to have to try and do it and create that's, this thing to do it. That's how they're going to have to do it. Because if you do, that. and I suppose, and this is not disrespectful, we've all sat there on a Thursday night, left work gone home, can't wait to watch your, your rugby and you've sort fixture and gone, you know, because you already know, you already know. Yeah. If you've seen... Certainly some, when the squads are released. You know, you're thinking, oh no, this is... But and I suppose in Sky's favour, mate, isn't it good that they've actually got somebody who's thinking a bit like them? Sky have probably never dared come into a big meeting because all chairmen have had power. They reckon the three or four chairmen, I'm sure Mr Pearson will want to shout in things and, and he's gone. I have no interest. He's actually said to what I've heard, he said... Are you watching what I've been watching? You've been putting some. No, no. It was. It was a bit. It was a bit. From what I'm saying, as you, Craig, you know, there was a few Super League clubs who were trying to shout down yesterday, um, and yeah, they've been put in a firm place. You know, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. The products that you've put out is dross. That's a shite. I love it. I love you, it. Where, dross. Is well, where are you going to get that I'll, product from, me, though? That's let, my argument. You can answer. in ten years if you start paying people. Well, I the whole I've, system got one, I've got one for you. Listen, how, how many how I'm many players do we think we had this chat the other day, and you know we're hearing that T. Ritson signed at St. Helens. You know, another good example. How many players do we think are in the championship and maybe getting fifteen grand? Who we believe that with a pre-season at Super League club and going into a full time 20 year, 20 year. Can, can become 50, 60, 70 grand players correct so you maybe want, that's you, you, a, you, you, maybe I that's a way you. that again if you, if you bring look at the Bradford look at the Bradford the cap, but, then Bradford, bring, but my no, issue is then Bradford is still you know, all them lower all the current champion teams can't be you're going to start paying them as well so everyone's going to be trying to up their I product just think but it, I, I just don't know how they're going to do it I think it. it's a knock on effect if, if Super League have to take more from the championship and probably will get a few more bargains from overseas if, if, if Super League takes some championship proje- pro- projects and product who, uh, who uh, they, they give 50 grand to and say we'll back you in a full time environment like Saints are going to do with Tia Ritson then straight away you're spending another 100, 200 grand on your cap and the next thing the League One players move up to Championship and then there's all this talent in the amateur game who might get a chance in League One and it'll be a knock on effect. Do Wakey, Jimmy, and Joe, mate, do Wakey 
I would say, let's say we're able to play at 1.6. That's, we don't know yet. We're not willing to go above that at the moment. So the reason we can't get Lewis Murphy this money is because we're only playing off that. Now you've got to, you've got to spend 1.8. Do they keep Lewis Murphy, yes or no? Yes. Yes, because they're giving more money. Listen, yeah, I, but I, Lewis I, Murphy is currently there. Like, I, I, the, the, the reason some of the reason but a lot of them the reason the they're not paying the cap, Joe, lose players because they don't offer. Yeah, but enough. then the but then a few injuries, and then that's why the product's low because then they play the young kids, and that and that's when you look and go, oh no, oh, it's the young kids. Are fantastic, aren't they? I get, I get yeah. it. To us, they're yeah. fantastic, but to the fans, when they see a team of young players versus another, a full team, yeah. that's when they go boom. That's oh, hopefully, big. hopefully this allows for us not to lose anybody. You know, I know what I think. I know what Will Price got offered to stay. I can probably know what a few of them got offered to stay. This might release that. Huddersfield are always top heavy on cap, mm. so when they made an offer for a top junior, they're probably going, "Oh God, we can't go above that." This would give the option to do that. Hopefully. In my eyes, and, and, and the final point is again, I think fundamentally, IMG are looking at this. The product has been dross, the games have been dross, the viewing figures have gone down. Yeah. If you're getting 1.6 from the current broadcast deal and you're only spending 1.1, 1.2, and you're paying CEOs and you're paying the groundsmen and you're paying your kit suppliers out your salary cap and all the other stuff, what you hear happens. Well, that's wrong. Of course, IMG are going to come in and say, Right, there's a salary cap floor. You're not a top tier team if you're scrimping and saving because you're actually lowering the standards. And that's the point IMG made yesterday. There's four clubs currently... That's not, that doesn't go not, into your salary cap as well, though. No, but what I'm saying is they're taking the money. They're taking the money, Joe. They're taking, what they're saying is they're taking the central funding distribution. They're taking 1.6, but the cap's only spending 1.1, 1.2. The other 400, 300 grand is going into your CEO's pocket. I it's think if you can prove that, that extra but I think money, it should go into your grounds that pocket, that extra it should money go into your strength and conditioning. It should go into... But IMG wants to raise the standards, Joe. They want the product to let, let, let me tell you if you could prove that you can't put it that 250 grand goes into making new new players by putting more into youth, I think that should be allowed. Yeah, that's yeah. There should be a cap allowed. So, same to, same to Sky, but this 200 grand we're spending less. We've got three amateur teams. We've got funded. the best academy We've in the We've got the best coaching funded. We've got this. I think that'd be different. There's got to be a little bit of clarity. We've got the top that. S- that. That's We've what, just brought in the top SNC from Europe. The name of the club, but we're not, we don't want to get involved in it. There's probably a club, I haven't got an academy, I haven't got this, I haven't got that. It's not their fault, by the way, we've been told that. But at the moment, they can play less cap and don't put nothing back into the system. That, that, that's the stuff Listen, that'll be I'm, I'm for it. Uh, yeah. I'm for it because it, it's going to raise standards. The season's going to be shorter. Matt was quite right. He says there's too many loop fixtures. We don't want Wigan St. Helens four or five times a year. It dilutes everything. Magic weekend's going, Summer Bash is going, everything is going. The Challenge Cup is moving from. What? Go on, I've got. I'm, I'm, this is my bit of information. It's starting in January. Yeah, yeah so it's starting in January, which I said to Matt after the event finished, I said, Matt, take it from me as somebody who grew up in the 90s watching the game. I remember Bradford playing Wakefield at Bellevue in January and there was eight, 9,000 there because it was one of the first games of the season. It's knockout rugby league. Um, there's that appetite there. There's that hunger. Everybody wants to watch those early season games um, and it's a, it's a very brave, bold move in my opinion. Mm. Now, as Craig will verify from his sources, there was a number of Super League chairmen and I've currently spoken to three and I've got three currently who are, who are, who are currently against... Um, I wouldn't say as far as rejecting the IMG proposal, but they're certainly against getting rid of the loot fixtures because they're saying their business model at their club requires a certain amount of games. What Matt's saying is, or IMG is saying, is hang on a second, if you re-remove these loot fixtures, it's not Wigan versus St. Helens or Leeds versus Wakefield four or five times. You're going to play each other twice. You might meet each other in the cup and the playoffs, but we can't, you know, it, that, that's not, we can't do anything around that. But in terms of the actual season, you're meeting each other twice, mm. one home, one away. That should create that appetite and that demand for record crowds at those fixtures, yeah. rather than who we're playing this weekend, Dad, who we're playing this weekend. <laughs> oh, it's Warrington again, we've already played them three times. And people deciding, well, we've already played this a, a few weeks ago, we're not going to go. Yeah. And, so, I think, and we just had that chat with Cara, I think it, to put it really simply, fans 
talk with the feet. And when they lose the respect and the, the quality of fixture and the importance of the fixture because of a repeat, all you need is 1,000 fans extra at every game to cover a full game. Correct. And, and it, it's as simple as that. And I think they could end up getting more than 1,000 extra. The, the bigger clubs I'm talking about, you know, maybe 10%, let's say. And that, that will mean that they'll actually not be out of pocket because there'll be increased attendances because the quality of the fixtures are better. We'll have less games where clubs are chucking out a team that they know is going to get hammered and devaluing a fixture, which is no good for the Sky viewers either. It's quality over quantity. It's as simple as that, and that's what we need. Craig? I miss you there. Sorry, I've got, a, I've got a, quite an urgent one. I think the Challenge Cup is, from the sixth round onwards, Michael, is a double fixture. Yeah, home and away. So when you argued or somebody did about the fixture being less, I'm told that it was explained. Well, yeah, the, the, it's not too less. No, no, the, you've, yeah, gained a, you've gained yeah. an away fixture which will be added up on aggregate, which is fantastic. We're, I think that's... Yeah, we were, we were told yesterday that the Challenge Cup will be home and away and <coughs> will be, yeah, will yeah, be the yeah, aggregate. Yeah. So, yeah, the Challenge Cup. So, the, the again, thing, th this might be news to people... But yes, not only is the season changing, but the Challenge Cup's going to be played in a home and away format, and it will be an aggregate. I like the um, I like the thing about making the games more valuable. I think if you look at like what the NFL do, the NFL uh, they have the conferences, and I heard that's where eventually rugby league wants to go in terms of conferences. And I think that'd be brilliant because you, you play everyone in your conference, and then what the NFL do is you chuck out, you get randomly drawn, and you play two or three teams from the other conference. Mm -hmm. So that makes them games absolutely rocking. I think there was one this weekend where they've not played in ten years. It was Minnesota versus oh, they've not played each other in ten years. And then that's the one game you watch. So you're watching a one-off game that you actually don't get to watch every single year. So I think that's the NFL do it genius. So it makes every single game so that. valuable. So I think if they did, if they keep on increasing the value of teams and making uh, two conferences as more teams get into Cat A, if they conference it out, I'd love that. Well, the Challenge Cup double like a big I love. I don't know why. I just I, straight away. Changes don't you think it, it's a good it? idea? I'm like, so imagine then you've got. Let's just say let's let's put. Wigan v Saints and they go to Wigan in the first leg of the Champions League as we say or Challenge Cup it's going to be the Challenge Cup you're going to do Champions some maths League. again are you yeah. just be careful yeah yeah but be careful so they do the first one and they play a game and obviously it's 12 to Wigan and then they do the aggregate score and they go away I think that second fixture straight away is a sellout if there's enough to go out yeah well, as long as it's not a 40, 40 blowout yeah. I think the second fixture you probably won't for your gate receipts that second fixture because be, let's say let's say Leeds cast and Leeds put you know they've got a twelve point lead and they're going to cast but the cast fans turn out think we've got a chance here mm. and I reckon that second fixture this is why it's clever is so exciting oh, yeah. and if they do that what's in the semis I don't know what, it's what's just the round, mate. is it just the one round or is it quarter semis two legs is it all two legs yeah 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 all, all but what, what's the difference onwards. what's yeah, the yeah, difference between that second final. game yeah. and just a one off game there's none there well, is because if, if Leeds if, just if, if, if Leeds win, yeah, that, that makes yeah. the one game clarify, that important and that the 1895 Cup final and the Challenge Cup final it'll be a standalone game there won't be two finals yeah but let's say Leeds are 12 and nil up after the first I love yeah, it they win 12 nil. but Leeds go to cast they I only have to it. lose by less that than game's 12. over so the game's on all the way through it could be a drop goal in the last yeah. minute but a one off game is even more important than that because if a team's if a team like let's say um, I don't want to insult anyone to, uh, to lose who finished bottom of this year play Wigan that one game they know they can pull off a win against that one game but over a two game aggregate most of the time bring it, the big the better yeah, team fair, wins yeah, overall yeah, but it's fair, fair but then it but well, that's the challenge, not let me tell you the challenge cup tickets as Mr Gledel will tell you at the moment is the worst sell in the world we've gone to nothing they've had to try something the Challenge Cups, because it's not on your season ticket, it's been as low as 2,500 for a round six match. No one wants to go. When we went to the Leeds this year, there's no one there. You sat looking at each other. So this has got to be with a chance of saying double legger. They've got it so they only play each other most at teams. So let's play. Let, let, all right, I've got one for you. Leeds I'm, play. Not, I'm not keen on so that. Okay. I've got Leeds, play, Leeds play Bradford. And they put 26 on Bradford at home. 
and they're going to Bradford. Do the Bradford audience come in the numbers if it won't? No. Well, let's say closer. Or do they say that's just a dead fixture? But if there's a bit in it, do Bradford turn out to play Leeds? In but why would, like if there's only ten in it? Well, why you know, wouldn't, you know why wouldn't they do it in the first place anyway? You know well, they're doing th- crazy. Think of it like this, Joe. Good example. If, if it's a one-off game, but Barrow have to go to Wigan, you'd give Barrow very little chance. However, if Barrow can go to Wigan and only lose by 14, and then Barrow get to take Wigan back to their place and give him that home advantage, that's what makes it a beauty of a cup. Because if a lower team gets an away fixture, most of the time they're going to lose it. But if you get well, a good one for the fans, because I don't think... If Barrow beat Wigan at home, if Barrow beat Wigan at home, but then they've got to go and hold on at Wigan. Yeah, well, that's, I, that's, I that's, like it, that's exciting. I like that's, it. That, that's the beauty of it. It gives the I'm, underdog a chance of playing them at home. And that's the beauty of it. Yeah, I like it. But sometimes they play at home anyway, yeah. based on the draw. But they're guaranteed yeah, but if, but, to play. But if they don't, then it's all over. We're guaranteed to play them. You're guaranteed to get. If you look cash. at the records, a big team will beat a small team at home nearly every time. But away from home, Unslet Parkside at home, getting a chance to play at home against a team from two divisions above. Well, it's good for It'd the be brilliant. Fit. For the money of the smaller clubs, obviously and, and they'll, they'll so it's a, generate it. a lot where, more. Where are we all on the challenge, Cooks? I, I think it has to happen, and I'll, I'll put my hand on. Big oh. fan, big fan. On the salary cap floor, I agree. But there should be allowed that. Oh, many Joe, have you walking up on the side of the bed? Is this? No, I'm a big. I, I think everything else they've done. I think these two arguments I've got. But as long as, long as clubs can spend on youth and justify it, there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. Giving it a chairman's back pocket, no. But if they want to spend some money on youth development. And then they should be allowed to as well. You've developed, even bringing in top strength and conditioners, it's been proven it makes such a difference, but rugby league never does it. The strength and conditioners, I've been speaking to one actually, they, they don't get paid anything, do they? Like, I'm sure one of them, they don't get paid much strength and conditioners in our sport. So I think even spending on that, spending spending it on the click kit man to clean up a dirty stadium. Spend, this is what they're saying to you though, Joe, I'll tell you now. And I've been in it fifteen years. They, they don't. Been. They don't. I get you. Yeah, that's why I think it's good. But I don't they think. I don't think a salary cap thing stops that. I think it just. Well, they do. I they're think their players. answer will be just giving they're, they're, a thirty-five-year-old English player. Listen, if I had, if I had the injury problems this year, the first place my money would go into is S and C. But it doesn't. But, it's but it now. does. But it won't. It, does. it won't. Honestly. I don't think it will. <laughs> I don't think. I think they'll just spend it on thirty-four-year-old English players because that's the way. That's the way the. But hopefully, it I, helps I don't, change it. But I don't think it will. I think it will. It could Probably. even accentuate it more having a cap. It could do, yeah. You, you're, def- you're arguing a good case for a very cynical point of view, and I, and I, I don't and think that's that cynical. That's proven over the history that that's what the owners do. They go and buy. But well, this is hopefully going to force them to think a bit differently. The old well, point of this is the Because will. don't forget, on the back of it, pick one club. The Catalans, two clubs, leads. You know what I mean? Catalans and Wigan, Toulouse. Some, but they, they, they've got the homegrown quarter cap. That's not been announced yet, and. The top tier clubs over here are going to have a cap on you. On you've got to have so many. If you, you know, this is where I think the shit will hit the fan. If you want to be a top tier club and you're a Salford or a, a, a Lee, you don't have an academy. Where are those? How do you class those players as homegrown? So when this homegrown quarter, quarter cap comes in, it's going to force you with the salary cap floor to produce your own players. Exactly. And this is why it's a positive because clubs have well, taken let's, the let's piss. Te- Craig, let's be honest. Clubs have taken the piss for too Gosh, long. Okay. They've taken the full riches of the TV money. Yeah, they've spent great. they've spent twenty thirty percent less. And yet they've they devalued the, the product. They they've, de- they've, de- they've devalued the product. <laughs> and this is part of the reason why we are where we are. I think that's it my fear. That's yeah. my it's fear, isn't it? That Lee, that's Lee, not Lee, Lee be interesting. Yeah. So let's put this one. Lee are in Super League next year if they win on Sunday. And there's, a, there's still a big if. But we think they're going to win. No disrespect to Craig. So Lee goes into Super League now, but potentially you get a Category B licence, okay? Which, in a year's time, after next year, they're going to be judged on being, are they, are they going to get an A? No, they probably won't get an A. But will they be a good enough B to stay in that Super League? So De- Deco, historically, walks in with big guns. Get me every player you can, I'm going to take these on. He's got a squad good enough in top six, what I've just seen. Yes. But Derek then has to think, oh, I need to get an academy. I need to get this. I need to get it. Would it would it make Derek think different instead of just going? Does Derek then go in and go? We've got to put. We've got two years. He has to. He's going to have to. So is it a positive? Yes, because Derek's going to have to. Derek's suddenly got to think of other things. Well, that's safe. That's safe. 
They put you they've it's got a whole quota. Yeah, but they've got, it's going to have to look at they've those got every single clubs. They're going to have 10, 15 different indicators. It depends how strongly they make every single indicator. Like, but Joey, we'll have to get his own players because they've got to have. But I asked that before. I said there's going to be a minimum in each, right? Yeah, 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 minimum. But what's the minimum? Well, like, we'll if it's the minimum C, well, a lot of them will take no, the C. No, we'll, we'll, we'll find it all out. But if you want to be, I think they'll make the and, academy. Yeah, oh, yeah we'll be. If they do, brilliant. But if they don't and say, no, oh, they, yeah, overall you have to. They will. The academy. We've got I got told. Plays and, and we, we need it. The, the academy said it. Yeah, but we've said we will a million times. I'll tell you. I'll tell you the top three now. Based on the examples of the clubs that were mentioned yesterday, outside of the top tier, Bradford, whether people what people's opinions are of Bradford or not, Bradford have come top again of attendances this year in the championship. So Bradford are the most supported club in the championship. So Bradford, is that, is that Bradford, that? Bradford, Bradford, Bradford were used as the crowds. York were used yeah. as the stadium yeah. and strategic expansion. London and Newcastle, Charlotte behind. Newcastle it. weren't mentioned, but the three that were we mentioned were Bradford, York, London. Behind, yeah. like That's it. not me saying, and I, I had this argument with so many people yesterday. They're like, "What? Why is Bradford in there? Why is London in there?" I please hear me out. Those three that were used were not used as these are the three that are going to be coming in. These were three examples yeah. of clubs outside of the top tier who are it in a very strong point. position. Yeah. And I think. When it comes out, the criteria, Craig, and it will be weighted, as Jimmy knows, weighted means certain areas are going to have more of a more points than others. I think it'll be the academy, the homegrown, the crowds, and the stadium facilities. Yeah. I've got one for you. I think it'll and be and I've, I've got one for you, which will help. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got one that'll help you, so we can do it live. And this is reactive uh, questioning, so we're going to do it with things. I'm, just, I'm going to say a club. Yeah. Tell me what area you think need to improve. Yeah. Just to give people an idea what we all probably think. I've had a laugh to go. Yeah, ready? Yeah. It's not about you. Right, ready? Yeah. Leeds. Leeds. Areas, it's nothing, it's nothing. What do you think? Areas improvement, probably on field performance, although they've just got, got to a grand final. final. Nothing. Crowds, I think, as well. What? The top spotted team in the league for 20 odd years. But they're not where they were, Jimmy, about five years ago. For about a thousand short. No. You're 13,000 shots, so we'll leave it on that. Ready? We're, 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 it's not about this. Jim's getting ready. aggressive over oh, the position. Oh, no. Jim's right. biased there, isn't he? We can, we can be here all day if Leeds have got anything to work on. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay. Okay. Well, 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 Leeds will be in it. Leeds will be in it. And he said, if you're asking me for some improvement, improvement, well, yeah, you probably want them to be more competitive on the field and, and winning stuff. Okay. Saints. Nothing. Nothing. They can't Did improve. They? They've, they've, they've won it four times in a row. No, I feel like we're being really picky, but if we, we can't hold on them one. We've got lover clubs. Yeah. St. Helens are in air, Leeds are in air. Performance on the field. Performance on the field. Academy as well. No, Academy, Academy's, 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 good. Academy's really good. Uh, yeah, p- I'm not about this year, I'm on about over a period of time, Craig, where they will be assessed. Saints, Saints, and uh, Saints, you'd go. If I'm, uh, can I be really picky? Bit picky okay, no, we've got to fly through these. We've got to get to yeah. Casted away. So we've got. We've got uh, Wigan. Jim, you can't. Wigan. Now, uh, don't own the stadium. Good. What a great point. We've got a long Mick, standing you, thing. Can I just say something? Stadium, you're not, no. not going to be kicked out if you do not own your stadium. Right. So, Mick's right then. Forget about that. Forget point. about it. It has to come for something. Now. Doesn't matter who owns the stadium, Absolutely Joe. No, no, they've got a long term agreement. They've got a long term agreement. It's for and that thing. stadium has improved. I, I, if I'm going to throw one into Wigan, it'd just be to make sure that they get that crowd back and work more on. Yeah, that's what I meant by Leeds. I don't like the decline it's in like, the crowd. Yeah. No, oh, Wigan's crowds. No, yeah, Wigan's crowds. Yeah, this year have been better on there. And I want to keep that yeah. going because yeah. I could be great Wigan and would sell out every time. Uh, Wakefield. Ground. Ground. Which they're trying to do. Performance yeah. Performance on the field. Performance on the field. Field. In the field. Academy. Yes. No, good. They're good. Good. No, no, they've, 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 got, they've got an academy, so I'll give Michael Carter and Sport uh, experience for the sporter. Yeah, it needs miles improving. Yeah, stadium it? facilities, Craig. A stadium not. overall, yeah. With Cass. Been, again, stadium uh, facilities. And, and, then, and then location, because there's Wakey Cass. I don't know if, if yeah, you say distance. Yeah, that's one distance. No, no, some CEOs, that is definitely a thing. Yeah, yeah and, just, all, and all the top clubs are in that category. You know, Cass. All. Stadium again. Performance stadium and location. Academy. location. Academy been like. The academy is probably their weakest thing. Yeah, along, academy, so, yeah. location. I mean, performance on the field. Game day experience, not bad. They've been solid enough. Not a bad day at Cass. Yeah, but the stadium, 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 stad
Massive. Um, they, they do not invest in their academy anyway. Wake, Wakefield will be a B, Castleford will be a B. And Cass would say a close to Wakefield, like we said, 12 miles yes. apart. Right, so yeah. we've got that one, nice one. Right, next one, we've got um, Salford. Uh, obviously, academy. But but I'm sure they're going to be able to sort that out with the new the new leadership, won't they? Yeah. They, so want, the moment, they want one academy. So now they'll be able to get. One. I think they still need to sort out the stadium issues. Whether or not they're going to stay at the AJ Bell if they're moving in to Moss Lane. Well, you can't fault them, can you? For no re- performance times. They tick the boxes. But that's only recent, isn't it? So crowds again. Back a There's lot. question marks over the crowds. Yeah, yeah. They, they are one of the least. They are one of the least supported top tier teams. So crowds and like we say, academy and, and probably stadium. Catalans. Again, they <sighs> location if they're going to if no, that works for them. They're being here. No, I don't Catalans think. It, be I, don't think it, I don't think it. Yeah. Oh, because because location, I'm, I'm, I'm again. I think they've gone against the French teams. Okay, so I think Mick. location. Catalans are an air for me. Nothing really much to do. Um, Catalans are an air for me, Craig. Uh, like it. The, the, I don't know a lot the about their academy because of a competition. Yeah, they do. But, but, but yeah. clearly, from League the team they put out against Warrington. Saints for for uh, the brilliance. So. Warrington about Saints. I have no yeah, complaints against, sorry, with against Catalans against. being in the top tier and being and given Wigan. It was against Wigan. Yeah. 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 Hull. FC. Yeah. Performance on the field. Homegrown quota. I think their performance on the field, though, same with Casper, no. I think it's good enough. I think mm-hmm. it's good enough consistently. I know it's not as much as Hull FC fans had won, but I think it's... They're still average eye, but the, but, the, but the stadium is never full, is it? But Because it's that big, the stadium, but it's actually hard work, isn't it? But they're still average You say homegrown quota, they get well, a lot of Aussies, the, don't they? They well, bring, the, yeah, bring through a couple I mean, that definitely bring through yeah. Laney, you know what I mean, all them, Jack Brown, but they. Well, there's loads in the yeah, Flash, yeah. Jordan Lane, there's, there's, yeah, there's Danny Houghton. David Litton, they're all coming through, aren't they? So, Hulk KR? Again, I'd, I'd say Hulk. I'd say Hull FC are in an A. Hulk KR currently probably a B. <sighs> yeah. That's a big call. Everyone's been Not saying really. that. I'm like, oh, I don't that's get That's a major massive, call, Mr. Massive, Geidel. Oh, no. So he's saying Hull FC, uh, 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 I'm not sitting against KR, by the way, but... No, I'm saying everyone on Twitter's put Hull in the A and... All right. Yeah, yeah, KR in the yeah. B and I don't yeah. understand I, I, I why, think, I, I, why. I think when you compare Hull FC to Hull KR, you've obviously got the attendances, you've actually got the ground and the facilities, which would be... I don't think anybody um, would disagree. We're talking neutrally here. Forget about any sentiment. Mm, if you've got the come against Craven Park... But is it better K-com to rent one, rent one or is it better to own your own ground? Yeah, but you're not being, you're not being marked on well, that, I've Craig. Just, I've just you're being marked on facilities. Weekend, yeah. You're being marked specifically on facilities. Whether you own them or and not. broadcast facilities. Yeah, but yeah. Right. So the well, OKR's okay, not great there for that, is it? Exactly, yeah. No. So that's why OKR okay, get marked down. Now, you could argue with what's happened with their academy, being put in special measures along with Castleford and Bradford, I know they're out of it now, you probably say that there's probably room for improvement in the academy. On the field... Really, in the past couple of years, though? I don't... Yeah, they did get that, but to be fair to them, they've been awesome last year. Yeah, no, no. But I agree with you. As as Castleford and Bradford are, they are reacting to the report and implementing the changes. Lee... uh, but but OKR okay, would be a B. They'd be a strong B. B. They'd be a strong B. Strong B. They'd yes. be the sh- maybe strongest with Cass. Or Lee. Cass be a B or Lee, Lee would be a B. Where Lee needs to improve, as we've just discussed, Craig is academy. Homegrown quota. Home that is quarter. the homegrown quota. crowd. Oh, oh. Can Lee carry a four thousand crowd to Super League? Well, they've already sold four thousand tickets but, for Sunday against Battler. So can they carry yes. that? Yes. Derek, Derek, Derek reckons next year they'll be averaging between six and seven. Nice. That's based on the Wigan nice. and Saints games and Warrington games where there will be... So they're just going to improve a, their youth academy and you the money they put. You can't question the performance on the field, Craig. Yep, um, like him. So yeah, Lee, 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 Bradford. Would be, Lee would be another strong B. Bradford. Bradford, again, there is question marks over the stadium and the facilities. You would have to argue performance on the field. The saving grace for Bradford getting a B would be the attendance is still the best supported team in the championship and, and the academy. Uh, but that's it, performance on the field. Any historic stadium. financial problem at Bradford? Does that go in? Well, I asked the IMG yesterday about that and, and he says, look, what's happened in the past? Because he, he did make a good point with IMG. They said, well, if yes, I know this has probably let Bradford off the most because Bradford have had the most financial turmoil, but let's not forget Wigness, Keefley, Barrow, Sheffield, Swinton. The amount of clubs that uh, Sheffield uh, that have had to borrow money from the RFL to stay solvent. So, you know, I guess you could argue that Bradford, in terms of if that was an issue, yes, that would be an issue, Craig, but that wasn't, that, that wasn't brought up yesterday. 
because they will be looking at clubs' finances. Featherston. They would be a B. Another strong B. So so being a strong B, you're as strong as KR and Cass. No, what I'm trying to say with a strong B... You put them a strong B. Yeah, what I'm saying is a strong B, Craig. I'm talking about a strong B in terms of the middle tier, the championship. No, no. I'm you can't do that, because that's, that's getting scrapped. They're not that's judging on that. They're, they're judging regardless of where you are. Yeah, that's so you can't say they're a strong B if you're putting Cass and OKR strong B. Right, well, OKR then are a B. They're not a strong B. Yeah, and so what... I then? thought you meant in terms so of... Fed, 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 Fed. Surely Bradford and Fev would be Bradford, weak. Well, Bradford, are you downgrading Bradford now? I, I said Bradford would be a B. They'd be a weak B, yeah. A weak B. B minus. Featherston would be a weak B then. Yeah. Yeah. Purely because there's B-. no homegrown <coughs> players. Purely because there's no academy. Purely because again, the facilities. Facilities. Not the best at Post Office Road. We all know about the floodlight issues. Despite Martin Vickers saying they're going to be this, that, and the other. But yeah, look, performance on the field. Featherston have competed. Done well, haven't they? They've done a lot more better yeah. than Bradford. So and I love what they've done to the stadium. It's just whether they can take it again into that yeah. net. They've done yeah. am- amazing, yeah. by yeah. the way. Yeah. Amazing. Because I used to go there 10, 12 years ago. Now it is amazing compared to Listen, life. Is, what Mark Campbell's done for Featherston, he deserves to be applauded. I know there was a bit of a bit of piss taking uh, about the result against Batley and. But you know, Mark York. Is, Mark is very passionate. Uh, they would be a, a B, a, York. a certain, a certain B, a medium where, B, a medium B, yeah. medium B. Where, where York probably need to, and this is probably what John Flatman said before he left, is they are trying desperately to get an academy, um, but that has come to no avail yet. Again, so York Academy and York probably crowd's going to go up. Well, you look at Toby Warren, AJ Towns, you look at those young homegrown players. Miles that, Harrison. That come, that, Miles Harrison that have come through. So there is that pathway there, similar to what Barrow do and Halifax do, which is go through the sort of college yeah. system. But again... And the Bachelors and Greg Minnick have yeah, been their yeah, system yeah. at so, a young age. So you probably just say where York are probably just letting themselves down ever so slightly is probably on, on, on that, that, that academy. But you're happy with a B? Yes, yeah, York, same medium. York, Sheffield, Craig York, tick on-field performance. Yes, the crowds could be higher, but if they keep, as you say, growing year on year in that fantastic stadium, the crowds will come. And so, it's amazing that we've got them at a B now. We put a B minus. I like it, lads. We should have, Sam should have typed all this and put it on. It's great. No, no, if you're asking me Sheffield. to do, if you're asking me to do this neutral, I've got York ahead of Bradford. Trevor Foster. I'm doing it neutral. Excuse me. Let me just name all great to Bradford. No, I'm doing it neutral. Noble. Sorry? You're asking me to do this neutral. Stuart I'm doing Fielding. it neutral. Stuart Fielding. He's just poor. York before Bradford. I apologise to all you greats of Bradford who've, who've been there. Paul Deakin. Sorry. There's Lavanna Curlo, Sean Taylor, <laughs> Graham Bradley, Danny P. That was your famous speech when they beat Leeds. You went, what did you say, Mick? We're all Leeds. You mentioned all top players of all time. You went, this is for you. Um, <laughs> Peter Fox. Peter Harry Fox, Fox. that's it. Um, Jimmy Thompson. Sheffield. Sheffield. Week B. Week B. <laughs> I've not got Sheffield at a B. I'm sorry. B minus? I've not got them at a B. C plus. I've got them at a C. C. Strong C. Street plus. So strong C. Doncaster. Strong C. Yeah, I like it. Because Why not Sheffield to be plus, uh, because, B minus? Because, Craig. Well, I like Sheffield. I think Sheffield, I've got a B. Stadium. Stadium. Need a bit better with youth, obviously, just not having an academy. No, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, I've nothing against Sheffield, but Sheffield would be a C, a strong C. Doncaster why, can't be why, a B why? because they're in the bottom tier, Craig, and you can't be a bottom tier club and a B. So the only way you can be a B is by being a middle why, tier. Why Sheffield to be the left? Why Sheffield, um, Sheffield not Sheffield need improvement on stadium. They've, um, they've just done it. Brand new stadium. I was there the other week, and if you're asking me, is that fit for is it better than the top tier? Uh, no, um, it's very primitive. You've just got the one stand and then standing railings around there. Um, I think that, that limits their sort of growth and potential. Yeah. Um, because the top tier does not want a two and a half thousand. Can I ask you a question there, mate? You know, we, we watch Australia, and I've still never been, so I've been. I've go. never been, I want to go. To go. I watch Seems to, the Manlies, and I watch. The, they don't have any stands, a lot of them have two stands, and the, and the people are sat outside the facilities. Yeah. At majority, at 35. Listen, Rooster's New Stadium. Well, the Colts of Urban Grand, yeah. But a lot of them have got that type of Sheffield. You know, things, why Why are they allowed to start in NRL for that money, but we're being judged on it here? Um, well, let's start. Sheffield's only holds two and a half thousand. 
Uh, Manly holds 20,000. Mike Out Oval, West Tigers holds nearly 20,000. Penrith holds 20 odd thousand. So it's so, the attendance? Yes, yes, it's the size. Sheffield Stadium, or like I say, I'm not criticising the facilities, I'm saying it's a very primitive in terms of capacity. It's very small, and that's going to hinder their movement and, and ability to move up. And I know they can expand, but you know, I'm just being Batley. totally honest. Batley, uh, that's an interesting one, Craig, because they do tick on field performance. Big games, they do get crowds, which I think are acceptable. But unfortunately, again, you know, the stadium does hold Batley back. Joe, Brett was mad about us looking at our phones, and I'm doing that. Sorry, Sorry Brett. Batley. Strong C, Batley. Strong C? Yeah. Yeah, I can't. The only thing is, I've, I've just tried to argue Sheffield B, but I think Mix convinced me. And I'm putting Sheffield at the C, I'm putting Batley at the top, I'm putting them at the C's. Jewsbury would be a C. Medium C, yeah. Where Jewsbury probably need to improve is on crowds and on field performance. That stadium, I mean, look, Max Sawyer would not, he'd be open and honest and say, Jewsbury are not going to be a top tier club anytime. He'd be happy to take the B. He'd be happy to take a B and be and in, a that, C. in that middle tier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, Barra? B. Only, only, only. And again, they'd be very, Barra would be very similar to, to Bradford. Um, a weak B in the fact that the performance on the field the fact that they are growing the crowds three and a half thousands against Batley and they'd be let down on the stadium that's the only area I think where Barrow need improvement under Paul Carey Craig I've watched Barrow grow as a club it's fantastic you know they've gone from an average of 16 1700 they're now sometimes getting two and a half as we saw at the weekend it's gone three and a half thousand against Batley an old Bay crowd um, where I think Batley's let da- Barrow's let down, and this is somebody from speaking well, in experience. Why can you have Barrow, Barrow at a B, but not Sheffield then? Because you've said the numbers are pretty similar there. No, no, Sheffield get nowhere near three and a half thousand, Joe. Yeah, well, that's Sheffield, one, that Sheffield. one game. What's the averages? Uh, average for Sheffield this year is about six hundred. What's so the average for Barrow? Barrow this year is touching two thousand. So that is oh. massive. That it's makes massive. It is. It is. It, it, why even and the Workington? But no, just a quick one on Barrow. Where Barrow's let down is, is, is the stadium. stadium. So if they can convince Barrow Council, Barra Council or Cumbria or whatever to, I don't know who the football club is in, yeah. in that Barrow. I know they've got a stadium over the road, Holker Street, forget, but you know, yeah. you'd be looking for some joined up thinking. You get Barrow, very, a small down version of the LNER Stadium, they're going to put serious pressure wow. and this is the old point about AMG Craig it's all about raising raising the standards right <coughs> and Workington got to be brutally honest Craig uh, both strong C's um, not B's at this moment in time again stadium facilities uh, where they will be strong is on that homegrown player they don't have academies but they do exceptionally well up there the using the community fun. game so they, that's their strong point Forget about performance on the field, where ba- Workington, and I'll include Barrow on this, Barrow, Workington, and Whitehaven, where all the strong, where, where the strong, one of their strongest points is, is that community game and the fact that they have that home role players. And this is where a lot of clubs are going are gonna to realise we're going to have to invest more in the academy. We're going to have to bring our own homegrown players through when this homegrown quarter is part of the criteria. Starting there, yeah. Toulouse? Toulouse would be a strong B where they are currently letting themselves down, and I'm sorry, Cedric, probably the crowns, Craig. They're probably not at where they thought they'd be this year. There were a couple of games towards the end, Hull FC, I think it was Leeds, where there was like three, 4,000. Um, look, if you're talking about improving the standards, IMG, they don't want Super League Huddersfield. games. They don't want top tier games, Craig, where there's three, 4,000 people. Yeah, Huddersfield, you're right, Joe, Guam. I've, I've got Huddersfield as a strong B. There's only crowd, you'd say. They've got everything else right, on there? I don't know the academies and that. I don't no, know. no, they're pretty much unbelievable. I'm would lucky. You, I'm would, lucky. You give, would you give them an A? No, because I think if you're getting three, 4,000 in a stadium, it's Exactly, impossible. that's going to let them down. So they're going to get the marketing better. Uh, they're going to get probably, yeah. you know... They're a strong B. Their big question is how do they get the fans in? Correct. How do they get the fans in? And how do they get the fans in? Correct. I'd say work a lot harder at doing that in the community, getting out there and producing a uh, better game day experience. I think they have tried. I think they've got it a bit better. The social media's got a lot better. Sounds daft. People said social media. 
Huddersfield was shocking. Couple, then I know Rich got it. Remember when he came on program and he, yeah. we challenged him on it, didn't we? And said, Rich, why don't you do anything on social media? He's like, we don't bloody need that. Yeah, bloody yeah, this. You're right, you're right. And then he did. He started to, start to get it right. So they're, they're going to get a better crowd. Without strong big, strong big. Newcastle. B. I only say B because of strategic location, expansion. The academy game up there is absolutely thriving. And the stadium, Kingston Park, is... Let me just get a couple of this. I'm just trying to work out your moves on the night with Jordan when you were in that club. And is this all to do with that? Jordan and Joe were Because you've wrote down a C to me privately. No, I haven't. No, John. He's whining you. Who paid for your table on Monday? The RFL. Whose table were you on? The R- Let me just explain something. No, no, I asked something you. Whose table were you on Monday? Let me just explain something here. Whose table were you on Monday? Let me just explain something here. The RFL. Let me just tell you something now and we'll put it out in the open. The RFL invited me and a plus one. So I took Damien. Joe was invited by Jordan. When I got to there. I was on the. T- I was supposed to. We were supposed to be on the table with Matt Shaw and and the others. Andy Wilson, bless him, he said, "Look, Trevor Hunt, who works for BBC Radio Manchester, he's bringing his missus, and somebody else was bringing his missus. So they said, "Look, it's going to be tight squeeze." So where did you end up? So they said, "Do you mind either going on the London table, which had five spaces, or do you mind going on the Newcastle table?" I said. I'll go wherever. The minute I knew Joe was on the Newcastle table, I said, get me on that Newcastle table. <laughs> <laughs> so, go on, Newcastle B. But, but it was the RFL inv- inv- uh, that invited me, not Newcastle or London. Newcastle, Joe. The fact they've got an academy. B. Newcastle would be a B. Yeah, I think. Where it. Newcastle need to improve is on field, field performance crowd. and the crowds, yeah. That is going to be a concern. And the player performance, yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Keithley? B. Oh. B. I think it's too soon. Strong C. I'd love to, Sam, I'd love to get the list of this, what we've done Strong and, and grade it on it. Strong C. Strong C. I'm going probably bottom B. No, I'm, 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 saying, think... I'm only saying strong C because if you ask me this time next year, I can guarantee there will be a B. But if you're asking me right here, right now, they're a strong C. If it got graded today, well, obviously, because they're in... Yeah, it'd be a strong C. Yeah, C, that's how I'm doing. I'm judging it in 2025. In 2025. No, no, we're, we're judging them on today, Craig. We're not judging them on today. today. On today if, we judge him in, if we judge them in 2025, uh, well, Bradford are in A because they're going to have that brand new 25,000 well, seat stadium not... and Nigel's going to get it all right behind the scenes. Well, that's very assumptuous of you, well, Mr Glennon. No, I that's think Keithley have Keith put Lee the money in, plus, to, in 2025. They've put the infrastructure actually will, in place now to be a good... To be a pretty I, I will high say this, Joe. I will say this. I've got Keithley out of Sheffield. I, I, I've got I've got Sheffield as a strong C. I've got Keithley the strongest C out of yeah. Uh, lowest B, strongest C yeah. around that area. Yes. Like, yeah. Yes. Right, guys. I think have we covered all the championship? Because if you forget any, Sam. Halifax. Just, Halifax. <laughs> Sorry, Grixie, we've got Halifax. I know they're watching the show with Mr. Crowd. He's actually rang me twice. I hope he's not. Who was Mr. Griggs? Crowd. Oh, Mr. Crowd. Oh. So, bottom line is Ian, Halifax. Ian, this is all I can say. Whatever happens, I wish you all the best. There you go. What? Halifax. B. B. Halifax R and yeah. B. Wow. Come on, Halifax. A Maybe. B. Where how Halifax many, how probably many players, need to improve. Many, I don't know how many players do they bring through, mate. Yeah, where Halifax probably need to improve is they've got the very good community links with the college. Uh, well, the shocking college Halifax college. have got, the shocking stat for Halifax would be... It's, it's going to be the Siddle's the greatest amateur yeah. club. And the Wigan leads, everyone... And everyone tass, gets yeah. there. Why can't that be tied in? Yeah, 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 yeah. If that were me, if I were buying Halifax tomorrow and somebody said to me invest, I'd say, right, how do I get Siddle, Siddle and them young to players, link into this? Like your Morgan Smith is, I'd pay yeah. 100 grand. I'd so be like, I'll do all your through. facilities up. I'll yeah, do everything. Yeah, yeah. We, get, we get to link in with your our coaches. I'd be taking control of that area because if they're... As good as what they've developed them players, it's, it's maybe about Halifax another week is maybe strategic position. They're close to a lot of different places, aren't they? Obviously, Keighley, Bradford, Halifax. maybe only have. Would Mick? Would they have? They're a comfortable beer, Halifax. Would they have? Like it. Would they have to choose between Bradford or Keighley if they're going towards strategic? Or position? Halifax? I think they'd or, have to choose one. Or out of the three, one percent. There's no way they're in all three in. No, no, it's way. possible, and, and, and that's the point. Have to one. I. No, Hull have got two. Hull, Hull, Hull is total rugby. I 
They can do, all right, all can do 17,000 fans to heat them up. Yeah, each. They put them three together, they don't get that. The whole the whole argument. Maybe in top is super, if they were good, I don't, I don't know. No, no chance. No, no. The, 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 listen, moving forward, the top tier will have both all teams in. Yeah, I know that. I'm not arguing that. I'm just arguing, <laughs> sure, could, couldn't you make room for two Bradford teams? <laughs> not the top tier, no. Ooh. So you're looking now at, are we, <laughs> chap, are we in chap one now? <laughs> We've done Doncaster in chap one. Cornwall. You've oh, done Keefler. Cornwall. C. 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 Well, yeah, they've got C. to be. C. But C. Every, with, they're all C. Obviously, C. obviously C. anybody C. in champ one higher than a C. No, because the car. You just give Doncaster. The car. Yeah, I mean, give Doncaster. Give Doncaster a C. C. If you're in League One, the bottom tier, you are a C. You can't be a B. I think, well, I, the question with the League One is who's got the most potential to become a B or an A? And obviously, I'd go Cornwall, Doncaster as the top two potential. Midlands would have to spend a lot more money, wouldn't they? They'd have to put a lot more money into it. So it's I'd say them two have got the highest potential to become a an A. I think in, if you if I if I said to you on top of that, if if we're looking at we're gonna sit down here in two years' time, us three, if we're all still healthy. Who's the most improving club out of them? Or would you say we're gonna sit here in two years and go, oh my god? They are now category A. It's all over. Who, give me one, boys. Will you, if you had to put a bet on now, yeah, who it. becomes a B plus? Super League first. A minus. Oh. Who becomes category A first? I'd go. No. Whatever. Yeah. Cornwall. What in two years' time? Three. No, you said it. In, who's gonna? Okay, oh, I took my hat off. That back on. <laughs> who's gonna become category A first? Cornwall. Yeah. Cornwall, you that. think they're the yeah. ones who can come right That's the way through Cornwall. the system yeah. and get the A licence? Yeah, but obviously I reckon in I seven, can't. eight years' time, it's going to take years for any of I them. Call, big I call, big call. I can't, I can't. I've got, I've got... Doncaster. I think it's all position for York. What? I, we, we're talking about, I thought we were talking about League One. The bo- no, 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 everywhere. Oh, York, obviously. Co- yeah. I thought you were talking... No, I talking think I'm going to be Doncaster. sat down with used to in two years and York are going to be super league. You've changed. And yeah, you did. They're going to be an A. Question they're going to well. be close to being an A. Yes, York. Yeah, of course. York are top. York or Halifax, depending on what they do. No, I'd say, I wouldn't say Halifax. No. No. Maybe <laughs> Bradford. <laughs> I, I've, I've, got, I've got York ahead Toulouse. of Halifax. Toulouse. No. I'm not saying Toulouse won't be, but if you said to me. Well, te- technically, Toulouse, uh, what you'd probably say, they're very close to an A. It'll be interesting if David. Drops the hammer, Mick. London could come back because he's probably yes. waited for he's probably waited for Which a chance news. to have a go. Look, look, do you remember when I said a few months back on this show? I'd po- spoken to David because I covered yeah. Bradford London. David was there. He said to me word for word, he said, "Now we're pretty much secure on the playing front in terms of surviving because obviously White, uh, Workington, and Jewsbury have done so poorly." He he said his number one aim is to ring Fancy Academy. And it kind of makes sense now, whether or not he had a sniff or he got wind of what was about to happen. But he said his number one priority at London was to ring fence that academy. Now that ring f- academy's ring fenced in the safe. The money was back. I've, I've had London been ringing for players. And now my. Has there been a hunger? No. Because everybody's that. recruitment has been on hold. Mm. And I'll say this now. No, I've spoken to them, they've nearly done. I don't they're going to grab a few from yeah, World Cup and I don't think. I, I, so they're like, went for the top four this no, year? No, no. Next mm. year, Craig. Next, it's not about next year, next year. But well, I'm saying you can't just build a squad year after. No, I agree. You've I got agree. to build that up. If David's wanting top four in Unless you spend, don't get me wrong, let, let, me, let me rephrase that. Unless you've got a million pound, go to World Cup and go for it. There's six, seven players out of contract who are fantastic. Go and sign them all up, get them in your team and clock that top four next year. Then you need some serious dough. Uh, and I'll be, I'll be honest, Mick, I, I was sat looking and, and keep having a laugh and saying one day through through my friends uh, who, who like to invest in sports, if they advise me, if I were advising them where to go, there'd be one or two clubs that I'd be saying to them, listen, put the money in now, you're probably going to get Super League. Put the money in now. I think the more interesting question is for who from League One is most likely to get in. Who's from League One going to get that A licence first? No, I can't see anybody currently. Mick, either. I've got a question on Bradford for no, you. I've been not, not on the 2025. Let's say in, none of them are going to probably do it by 2025, but give it 2028, 2029. To, Mick. As, it, as they keep growing, who's going to make it first? I'll say I'll be Doncaster. Doncaster. Mick, question for you. Yes. Bradford. Yes. What has been announced yesterday? 
you're looking at Bradford. Right, yes, I'm looking and at And I'm saying as a franchise, Bradford are like that. Let's be honest, right? Of historically over the last 10 years. I gone, have made my Joe wouldn't remember this, but as a no, young man... Yeah, I remember Bradford. Right, you've been being yes. the biggest club, yes. right? I've made my feelings very right clear. Not on the, <laughs> no, I'm not just saying so. So let me tell you, let me tell you. If the right people came to Bradford, would you ever get 10,000 people back in that stadium? Yes. What? Well, if they got the Messiah coming... <laughs> I, I need to be very careful here, Craig. I'm kidding. I'm I, no, no, no. I, I no, don't ask you there. I, I, we're, 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 we're back, Nigel. But if Nigel, if Nigel wasn't there, and somebody come, what can Bradford get that franchise back to? Listen, I know what's happening in the background, and whether it happens, it happens. If it doesn't, it doesn't. I don't think there's anything happening. <laughs> no, the, 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 yes, there's, there's wheels in motion. Um, what I will say is, if you're asking me, Bradford in the top tier versus Leeds, there's, there's 10,000 there. No, no, I mean, just overall, though, can, <laughs> you are the Bradford fans, are the Bradford, is there an appetite in Bradford, not 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 historic people, I'm not, I'm not knocking them, but is there a new breed of Bradford fans who want to go and watch Bradford? Yes, but at the minute, they're not going to... I'll be honest, under Nigel Wood, it's not going to happen. Yeah, said it. That's no disrespect to Nigel. Um, a lot of people think it's time for him to move on, but it, whether he moves on... He's only been there a year and a half. <laughs> year and a half. <laughs> Fucking hell. Have we got that miles off? <laughs> well, why do you think Craig's laughing? <laughs> oh, no, I'm laughing at that and just the way... I'll tell, tell you what. I'll tell you what. Well, you said an impact and no, he's probably what, what, been there for a year. What, what's, years, the, what's the film? What's the film where the, the man reveals himself behind the mirror and the curtain? Is it yeah. like Dorothy or something? You think somebody's... No, look, 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 look. If you're asking me, Craig, can Bradford get back to where they were? You, the, Bradford are probably never going to get to that 15,000 average as they had in 97. It's a diff- the sport's a different world. Um... But Bradford in a top tier, not playing at Odsall, so we're talking potentially a new stadium or elsewhere. It'd have to be a new stadium because Dewsbury would not accommodate it. So maybe if yeah, you, they could they could get the crowd. They could they could comfortably get back to ten thousand. Maybe if you base it off, it's West, a long. West Bowling are the second. It'd be a long best journey. team in the youth division, aren't they? It'd be a long, long way to get there, Craig. But anything is possible. But like I say, whilst there's this, I'd bring it. I do you know. I'd do what they're about locating our Bradford. I'd bring it if they did get chance for a new stadium. I'd bring it more this way. There's one for you. Well, they can only use it at Od- they can only use it at Odds- uh, because that's where it's going to be, Craig. Right. If, if it comes off, if the stadium comes off again, you know, you're talking fifty million pound of government money, ten million pound from the university, the RFL putting money in, uh, city of culture money. There's a lot of money. Here's my last thing on this, and I think we've had a great show, and hopefully we've helped a lot of people. We've got some viewer questions. Yeah, we've got some viewing questions. We can do them, but I'm going to give you one here. And this is what I've heard, and this, this, please take this for what it is. If if you think it's true and it might cause problems, Mick Gledel told me. If you don't, it's come from me. So I'm going to say that IMG, what do they get out of this? So the what I, this is what I take in my head, what I've seen. If IMG have took a basis of we will employ staff into your system at the RFL, free of charge. Correct. And we're going to put something in and re, re, rebrand this sport and give it some. And the next TV deal, whatever, over a certain figure we get, or we get a chunk of that. Correct. So what I've heard the deal is... No, it is, it's, it's correct. It's, that is the most interesting the way of... And I've been sales all my life, Mick. And if you're a good salesperson, you'll back yourself because you've got that personality. IMG are probably probably the biggest brand of salespeople or commercial branding, marketing branding I've seen. I think it's amazing. If they don't make a success, they don't get a penny. Correct. Well, that is absolutely unreal. And I'm going to clap your IMG. I, 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 I hope. What, 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 what he said yesterday, Matt. That's amazing. What he said was, you grow, we grow. Yeah. You benefit, we benefit. And it, it's a shame we can't really show the slides. They're gonna make. They're gonna make. This is what. And I said, how would it affect the agent? So, so, so historically, we've 
promoted a lot of our players. We do most of the promotion and interview players we try and do as a company. On social media. You know it, don't you? Social media and what we've done. Now, IMG are going to come and start promoting the players. The top players are going to be promoted by IMG, as in the brand yeah. and the league. And I said, God, how does that affect the agent? They said, it won't affect the agent. It's just the brand and the game. I said, right, okay, I get you. So they're hoping to get the top 20 players, say, in this country, who will then, you know, be marketed everywhere. So if they, if they own the UFC, will they bring the top UFC champion onto the stadium at the Eddie old, they already kind of, well, they're not top champion, but yeah, you know already, what I'm saying. They've already got Tom Aspinall to do. Yeah, their so they're going to get the IMG going to bring their yeah. bring their boys in and say, right, bring these people around the game. Keep with the is the NFL finally sussed the set on Jacks at the grand final. There's a little bit more <clears> forward thinking on that, but I just, I love it, Mick. That they're not getting paid unless they produce because. I used to do my salespeople at, at, at Yorkshire Ways, and I used to look and I used to think, what was the most thing that drives a person? Usually it's profit, <laughs> profit, you want to change your life. And I always thought of salespeople have to be done on that. If you give them a set wage and you just said there's no more bonuses for that, you, you get this You get this pretty much, not driven, but average. But I tell you what, one of the biggest companies it will drive in our sport forward, and they're only on money if they do well. Yeah. That'll do me some. That know. will do me. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Questions, Joe. We'll finish off. No, you charger. That's why I'm panicking. Right. Yeah, I'll just need the chat. Apologies for right. this. What? Right, Mick. Well, until you ask me and Mick, and we'll try and answer as many as we can before we. Right, we've got questions in. Um, first one. Will the lowest will the lowest league ranked B club in the top league be swapped with the highest league ranked B club from the second division? If a top club has a licence, how long do they keep that before it comes under review? Or are they put up for relegation? So That's in by uh, Shabba980. If you're talking, he's mentioned B. So if you are a B, it is reviewed yearly. It's reviewed annually. So IMG said for the first few seasons, 25, 26, 27, there is going to be not a full so basically there won't be a full set of 12 A's that's what they're working towards once they get to 12 A's they'll go to 14 when they've got 14 A's they'll go to 16 and then hopefully oh, 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 they'll go oh, to oh, two oh. conferences that is ultimately what they're yeah. trying to do they're trying to grow it so Mick has, the, of, has the power finally gone from the mafia of rugby league I asked this and the as, said, you know well, the owners and yeah, the big hitters yeah. they look like they've lost the power well, it does because they've got to go with IMG or it, 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 it shit a bus, Craig. So, for instance, let's dis- use this as an example. 2025 comes along. We've got the status quo in the top tier. You've got York, a hungry outside it. Wakefield, they've got the new stand. Crowds are okay. York, ever so slightly, as a B, earn more points than Wakefield. At some point in that 25 season, Wakefield will be told, you're out and you're Corinne. Wow. So that is how it's going to work. What Actually, IMG don't want is Wakefield then having a good year in the, the middle tier and getting their acting order and then having to take York out because they've got more points. They want it to be stable. So they don't want two clubs going out this year and two in, you know, it might be settled for a couple of years before you actually see change because that doesn't do anybody good. But what they ideally want is they want everybody to have a look over the shoulder. Hang on a second. Bradford have got a new stadium or Barrow have got a new stadium. Featherstone have got a new stadium. And and everybody's improving and growing together. So... What they're saying yearly, they're not... They're, they're, they might not change loads. Yeah, yeah, they might But they're going to take... But they're going to keep the clubs that might take the pit. They might, that be might the take the piss as being yeah. accountable. You know what's quite good I like is that say if AMG have also gone to Sky and they've sent to Sky, which they'll have imagine they'll have some major connections in Sky. Yeah, yeah, It'll yeah, be yeah. something you've never seen. Yeah. If we invest a million pound a year or the next two years in marketing the rugby league 
and the historically the deal for the last one is X amount. If we can improve it and improve viewing figures, will you give us a better deal? That that would have already been talked about. Correct. Yeah. So Sky would have said yes. Well, judging on judging on the fact they're not getting paid, I don't think they would have gone into the deal mm. without already that exactly. conversation. That's what we're trying to learn, people. So if you think about it, it's even better again because they probably already had this. Now again. I know it sounds a bit daft, but how do we get people stop using that bloody thing? We'll have to do the programme about that. <laughs> I've got so the next question from Sky Rugby, literally links in perfectly. What are the thoughts on the what are your thoughts on the yearly review of grades? Doesn't this add uncertainty on a yearly basis, wondering if you go up or down? Not really, because the grading's there to show that the clubs are listening and improving, so you wouldn't Well, I, I could, Academia you judged every year. Correct. Yeah. And have a good year at school and then it doesn't it, the only time it'll create uncertainty is if those B clubs that are in the top tier rest on the laurels, laurels. and don't improve and you've exactly. got those be, behind you below you Biting. improving yeah. yeah yeah this is why I put the tweet out yesterday yes I missed off Batley and Featherstone I couldn't fit them on but I said Bradford Newcastle York Halifax Witness it's good news because well, those good- clubs who are established strong championship clubs Obviously, in the case of Bradford, Witness, Halifax, once upon a time, they were in the Super League, London as well, is, you know, it's good news. Next question from Steve B. Uh, A protection racket for the top teams, it needs complete transparency. I remember the RFL, going on to what you actually said earlier, Dan, I remember the RFL refusing to acknowledge the existence of the Lee Sports Village and using Hilton Park as an excuse to exclude Lee in favour of Celtic Crusaders. Have a well funded distrust in that, you know. Well, the, the, well, the worst one historically, and Mick knows more about it than me, would be a story, the Unslut story, which yes. is now still bitter after 25, I don't know how many years, but they. 1990. They got promotion. 1999. And they changed the rules the year they got promotion. They did. Oh. I don't know, they, you have to do the backstory, I'm sure they Sam beat, could they Google they, something. They, they beat Jewsbury, but they, they was got there, promotion. And, 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 and the. the, the, the Unsuch should have been in Super League. Super League. And they changed the rules yeah. and said, it you've was, got to have this, it whatever. It was the Super League clubs who did it. And they just stopped them coming up, which... Leeds, Bradford, Castleford... And the the, that's why there was a lot of bitterness with Leeds for a lot of years. That Leeds didn't want Tunsley. Yeah, yeah, correct. To get two teams in the top team, yeah. there was Ellen, which I, I think that's the worst one I've heard. Yeah, that's that's horrendous. correct. Yeah, they win, they, win the, they win the grand final at Edinley in 99, beating Jewsbury and you don't go in. Basically, the conclusion is they have to keep the clubs account, take the power off the CEOs. Um, next question from a uh, Paul Stephen. Given this is pretty much what most fans have been asking for, why didn't Super League and RFL ha- have the bottle to do this years ago? The tough question. Um, I'll just be brutally honest. You know, you've paid Ralph Frimmer, Nigel Wood, Brian Barwick, Simon Johnson, thousands, hundreds of thousands Robert of pounds. Elston. Robert Elston, hundreds of thousands of pounds. Um, and it's taken the tennis. Uh, Richard Lewis. Roger Draper. Uh, Roger Draper, yeah. You've... you've, you've the sport has, has failed itself. Um, it's an admission that's of failure. They've left out Mr Wood there and Ralph Frim. That's nice, see that. Karen, that's lovely. What are you on about? You never said Ralph. I did. Did you? Yeah, you did. Yeah, I at did. The start, yeah. I said them all. Ralph oh. Frimmer, Karen Morehouse, Nigel Wood. Oh, like Brian Barwick, I mentioned them all. <laughs> Listen, whichever way you look at it, it's an admission of failure by the RFL. I that actually said, help. I, in answer help. to that question, Joe, uh, I actually said a long time ago, I think, on this show, IMG is perfect because it's it's behind smoke mirrors. In other words, IMG that. will deliver from a corporate point of view. We have been personal, so you won't be able to say, "Hey, Sam, it's you who's done it. Mick Leddle, you've done this. This will be no IMG. The brand has done it. Forget about having your little Twitter wars. Who's IMG and they can't they can't yeah. personalize yeah. what's going to happen. Yeah. yeah. So the CEOs can't. Hey, Nigel Wood. And let's be honest, they've all took hammer, yeah. and it's been too personalised. We've been run like a working men's club in a way of, Correct. you've been able to say fans, oh, it's that big, f- but it's him. Well, now they can't do it. Yeah. We're, we're going to do a call, biggest branded world. Bloody IMG, bloody IMG. Um, we, are ca- <laughs> we are capable of it. I think we already have on Twitter. If you- <laughs> oh. <laughs> round, round, yeah, yeah, it's gone mad. Round A Rhino, is the salary cap going to be reviewed, Craig? Yes. Make- yes. 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 The salary cap probably will go up and there'll be the salary cap floor as we know what's coming in so yes I hope they keep the t- what we talked about earlier on I hope they can pay the top youngsters more money and I think if they do bring top end players like we've always dreamt about let's bring the best players in the world of them. yeah the marquee rule you can spend what you want and then final one by Sean Ewell 
He's got a couple actually. Number one is never say final, Mecca. You've got hundreds of We've only got time for one more. So let's. We've only got out. time for one more, guys. This is the final. We got loads of responses, but Big actual questions. We got loads of like. <laughs> we got loads of like tweets in general, but Hello. just questions. One is central funding going to be more evenly distributed, uh, no. distributed no. along the top two tiers? No, no, the no. central funding is going to stay the same. So if if the TV deal increases, everything else increases, but the funding stays the same. Two, if oh sorry, Dad. Well, it's same as what we said for years. If they met the top end strongly, it'll flow down. Yes, yes. Trickle down economics does it? So work? the only way, the, so the only way the middle tier, so the bottom tier are going to get more money is if the top tier improve the TV deal. Yeah. Two, if the grade, if the grading aren't coming in till twenty twenty five, then does promotion and relegation stay for now? Is it a closed shop for two years? I think we know that. So promotion and relegation will take place this year. Lee or Batley will go up. Toulouse will come down next year. There'll be promotion and relegation, and then that's it. At the end of twenty four. Everybody will get the grading and 25 Super League. But what you, top tiers of clubs. This is what I'll say to clubs is, again, try and make it so in the next two years, you, it will be, you have got to be a top four in the championship to get a grade B plus or, or an yeah, A. Yeah, agree. You'll have to be a top four club yeah, because in the championship. Yeah, performance on the field, Craig, I agree. So you're going to have to be in that top four. Top four. Or top five. So if you're you going to have to be in the playoffs. If you, yeah. up, if you come up from champ one, and, and, and they're saying uh, Cornwall, Doncaster, you'll still have to be, you'll, you'll have to go top four or top five. And, 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 and let's not forget. And it depends if they say historically. So they might say we're going to do it two years on trot, one year, so it'll be. And this is why I think York are probably right in there already. Because they're probably in there already, aren't they? They're already competing in top four. Yes. Do you get me? Yeah, I agree. What would it cost another club to get? Do you know what? We know this question. What will it cost a bottom a bottom uh, three, four club in championship or a top three or four in the champ one to get in the top four of the championship? Let me answer that question. Historically, the league has been won usually with a million plus. Yeah, That's Toulouse, Lee... Yeah. Who've gone up? Have always spent Toronto million Toronto plus. Million yeah, plus. but then if you look at the top, so four then we York. go top four: York three fifty ish. You'd have to say Bradford, uh, Halifax, similar sort of figure. Similar sort. Bat- Batley, have, are Batley literally in the final. On so so, two eight, or you could do a Barrow, eight? which is you know Bat- Batley are just over two, Barrow about two and a half. But you know you get. But Batley, this is what they don't understand about Batley, and let's give them massive, massive rap. Lingard, We never talk about Batley on our program. Craig Lingard, Batley, Kevin, Paul Carey, no, Kevin the chairman, or oh, Kevin Nichols, yes, sorry. Kevin Nichols, amazing. What an atmosphere! Back to old school, pinted and all sat there afterwards. Amazing. But that's not happened over a year. Batley have had seven years to build up that. Some yeah. players at Batley have been there years. So again, back to people who are sat there going, we'll just put a good team together next year. No, you won't. Then Batley players have been amalgamated over the last six or eight years. I can remember when the John Keir were there. Where did they finish? They won it, didn't they? Or finish, uh, they uh, finished fourth, yeah. They were in the, the middle eights playing your Leeds and Wakefield. So yeah. they've been building and building and building. Your Dave Mannings have been there for quite a few. They've been building this squad together. You can't pick up a squad and do it next year so I've been warning to you Mate, if you're all going to sit back this year and all gamble on trying to get in the top four next year depending on where you want to be I'd be very careful I agree well let's leave it there for this uh, yeah we've done it we've smashed let's it let's leave there, it there for this, uh, for this show Mate, can we promote so, yeah. the England show we're doing the World Cup show Sam we're going to wear these again. Yeah, on the. Give, give, on give Shane another block plug, please. Yeah, so you know, elite, and the lad Lee. Eliteprosports.co.uk, Oxen. So not only can you get your woolly hats in grey and the traditional uh, red and white of England, but there's also the training tees if you want to go to the gym. Um, as you say, they are the official uh, shirt suppliers of these wonderful England Rugby League World Cup shirts, and um, that they'll be playing in those games. Um, certainly against Samoa at St James's Park but yeah elite pro sport yeah Mecca's proud of it Shane, Shane, Shane was saying to me and I don't want to quote him because it's not fair but he quoted how many shirts historically historically get bought by international towards a club and if I told you historically what they compare so England would compare to I don't want to say because it's not fair what it compared to you'd be gobsmacked are we talking big or low? low <laughs> yeah 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 so it's gobsmacked that. Listen, when we go to the game, get your top on, 
get your hat on, bit of pride, get behind the team. We're going to do a World Cup show next week. But please, you know, I'm, I'm much as a top. Do we, do we know it, Sam? Anybody? Uh, without, without thinking Shane and, and hat and things, I wonder how people say it's too expensive. They're about, they're about 50 quid. <laughs> about 50 pounds. Should we know? Well, that's for Shane to sell, isn't it? But I'm just thinking, that's because I mean, how much would an England top cost you uh, off, you know, Spot Oxen and, and uh, Elite? Is it Elite Pro Sports? Elite Pro Sports. Pro Sports. Yeah. That's the one where you get the merchandise. And all that. Sam's sticking his time here. Well, these hats are 16 quid, so... So hats are 16? I mean, yeah. At the minute, I've got a good offer on here. We've got the England shirt, and we've got... Training tea as well, Captain Run training tea, 54 Once Go on, sell that one, so we can have what? Is that at EliteProSport.com UK? That is at EliteProSport.com So there you go. Well, she might short this one for Slim, come on. So here you go, for 54 99 you get an Elite Training T-shirt. There yes. You go. It is a luxury engineered garment that inspires you <laughs> to move, be active and lose weight. And look cool in the gym supporting England Rugby League during the World Cup. And, and also this beautiful England Rugby League shirt and also the hat. Well, look. Oh, so that's now. all in? No, no, just the, just the top and the, the shirt. top and the shirt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For so 54 you get this, 99 it's lovely, luxury engineered. Look at it, look at it, look at it. Oh. The quality, the quality. Oh, it's a lovely garment. Bloody hell. There you go. Unfortunately, it's in medium, so it won't fit me. So. I'll be in the gym tonight using that mick, I reckon. You Thank you. Personalised 15 quid. What's that, Sam? Personalised 15 quid. For £15, you can personalise the England top with your name on or anything yeah. you want to put, I'll, your nickname I'll, I'll, or your... I'll get my DJ name on back. Yeah. The Gleds. <laughs> DJ McGlenn. Joe the Rocket and the King. Leave you with that. See you Monday.